Week three of the college football season brings us to Buffalo for a premium matchup on opening night in the Mid-American Conference. Eastern Michigan, Buffalo, both undefeated 2-0, looking to go to 3-0 with a win here this evening. And welcome, everybody. Doug Sherman along with former Michigan Wolverine Marcus Ray. So glad you could join us tonight. Chance to see a couple of premier quarterbacks, starting with Buffalo's NFL prospect, Tyree Jackson. Tyree Jackson stands at 6 feet 7 inches. He has nine touchdown passes on the year. He even threw six touchdowns in one half against Delaware State. Look at the ball placement by Tyree Jackson here. He's going to stay alive elude pressure and let the ball go down the field. We'll take another look at that one to Jones, but he's a guy that's really developed his pocket passing presence, and I really like how he can throw it off his back foot, and he has great ball placement. So while Buffalo went to Philadelphia and beat Temple, this Eastern Michigan team went on the road and picked up a huge win at Purdue, led by their fifth-year quarterback, Tyler Wieger. Tyler Wieger's looked like a guy that's been in this program for five years. The grad transfer out of Iowa has a great completion percentage in the mid-70s. I love the way he looks down the field. He throws his wide receivers open. He went down to West Lafayette last week, had a big day. Teardrop passes over the shoulders. Watch the 75-yard pass to Sexton that really broke that game open. He's a guy that's made Eastern Michigan a lot better. Well, you know what, Marcus? There is a new tradition as we celebrate Maction here in 2018. We're a bunch of scurvy pirates. Yeah! We're going to go on the road in the Big Ten and win. We raise the pirate flag! Yeah! We will be talking end of game magic from a pair of thrilling week two wins. Eastern Michigan Buffalo next. Ryland the freshman. It is up and it is good. Eastern wins in West Lafayette. They upset the Boilermakers. Third and 10 from the Temple 29. Minute nine to go in the game. AJ goes in motion. Man to man. Shotgun snap, Tyree in the pocket, fires to the middle, it's caught. AJ breaks the tackle at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, at the five, still going. Look at him go. the goal line, bullseye, it's a Buffalo touchdown. Anthony Johnson when you need him the most. A huge win for the Buffalo Bulls and their fourth year head coach Lance Leipold who has now won five in a row going back to last season their 2-0 start this year the first time that UB has done that since the program was elevated to the FBS back in 1999 and he'll be matching wits one more time with Chris Creighton your number five in charge of Eastern Michigan they also 2-0 last time Eastern went 3-0 to begin the season was 1989. So that's what's on the table here today between Eastern Michigan and Buffalo. These two coaches have never faced each other in MAC competition, but I'll tell you what, Marcus, if we turn the clock back 11 years ago when Leipold was the head coach at Wisconsin Whitewater and Creighton was the head coach at Wabash, they squared off in the Division Three playoffs. So here we go all <laughs> over again. Yeah, these two coaches know one another, and they've really developed these programs and got them off to a great start so far. And we are underway. Jesse Kelly's kick is taken by Buffalo, who won the toss, and the Bulls will have the first possession at the 19-yard line after the return by Isaiah King. Special teams, I think, is going to play a big part in this football game. It really helped Eastern last week. You see Buffalo electing to return that kick. So far this year in 2018, we've seen a lot of fair catches due to the new rule. Where you can fair catch it and get the ball at the 20. But Tyree starts at his own 20. As a matter of fact, Eastern Michigan has had zero kicks returned this year. When they have been receiving, it's either been a touchback or a fair catch. On first down, Tyree Jackson finds his favorite target, Anthony Johnson. Projected as a first round pick in next year's NFL draft. Well, and you see why Doug, he catches the ball with his hands. He has great size at 6'2, 210 pounds. He can run. He had a big breakout year in 2017, more than 1,300 yards. And so far this year, he's got 10, make that 11 catches, but he has. 133 yards and two touchdowns coming in. Yeah, preseason second team All-American as a wide receiver, and his numbers through the first two games have been down a bit because he's not played a full game. They blew out Delaware State to open the season here two weeks ago. And then the game down in Philadelphia, 
He missed a lot of time in the second half as they were battling Temple while he was battling other things. Pass complete for a first down. K.J. Osborne, clearly the number two option in the receiving core with his first catch. You see right now, offensively, Buffalo wants to use a little play action, run RPO stuff, get their receivers in space, force those linebackers to open up the middle of the field. So it's going to be a chess match, I think, on the first drive. From the 32-yard line, Tyree Jackson, 6'7", 245 pounds, a redshirt junior from Norton Shores, Michigan, played high school football at a tiny school called Mona Shores. Screen pass completed, but George Rushing, the Wisconsin grad transfer, falls. And so it's no gain. That'll bring up second and ten. Well, George, George Rushing, the third, is just one more weapon that Tyree Jackson has this year at his disposal. But when he took over the job three years ago, they just didn't have people like him. You get a grad transfer from Wisconsin like Rushing two touchdowns against Delaware State. It just gives Tyree Jackson more weapons offensively. Jet sweep. And off to Isaiah King. Tries to get the edge, able to get out to about the 37-yard line. In pursuit, Kyle Rockwall, the Mike linebacker for Eastern Michigan, who is so good. Rockwall was outstanding at Purdue. 11 tackles and a forced fumble that Forced the Boilers to settle for a first quarter field goal in the red zone. They're making a big tackle after a pickup of six. See Rockwall playing sideline to sideline. He got hit with a targeting penalty in week one because he's a physical kid. He plays fast. He's one of their captains. Preseason all Matt guy. On third down, that's a first down carry. Right up the middle, Emmanuel Reed. Well, the running back attack for Lance Leipold has turned into a three-headed monster, really. Reed is the starter, but Jonathan Hawkins has started plenty throughout his career. And then Kevin Marks, number five, we'll see him come into the ball game. He's coming off a career performance last week at Temple, 138 yards and two touchdowns. So he's a redshirt freshman. Reed's a redshirt junior. Hawkins a redshirt junior. Marcus, do they have enough running attempts <laughs> to keep each of those three guys happy? I think so, because they rotate guys and they have situational players, short yardage backs, third down backs. So there's enough food on the table for everybody to eat in this offense. And I think Tyree Jackson's ability to distribute the football opens up the offense. Jackson fires right side, caught. Osborne, a little short of the marker. It'll bring up third down and one. Right now, this Buffalo offensive line is giving Jackson all kinds of time to throw the football in. And I like the play calling. They're going short and outside, intermediate routes, mixing in a little bit of run, and that's why they're in third and short. Jackson fires. Got a man. It's Johnson. He hauls it in at the five. And down inside the two-yard line. What a pass by Tyree Jackson. We'll take a look and see. Exactly right here. You get a little flushed out the pocket to the left. It's tough for a right-handed quarterback to roll left. But look at the hand-eye combi concentration by Johnson. He beats Ross Williams on that play on the third down. No signal yet. That'll bring up second down. Well, one of the strengths for Buffalo is this offensive line as we take another look. Evan Kazarzak at left tackle. Paul Nosworthy, the left guard. James O'Hagan at center. He's one of the captains. And on the right side of the line, Tomas Jack Cordila and Coyote Awasika. On second down, it's the redshirt freshman, Kevin Marks. Touchdown, Bulls. It's a very efficient first drive for Buffalo. They were in third and one, and that's called a waste down, meaning take a shot because you're in four down territory. And right there, they got the one-on-one -on -one matchup that led to that touchdown plunge right up the middle by Marks. But watch the interior offensive line. You get the double team at the point of attack by O'Hagan, Nosworthy. Point after up and 
good by Adam Mitchison, the senior from Pittsburgh. And a quick start for Lance Leipold's team, looking to go 3-0 for the first time at the FBS level. Yeah, he's fired up. I, I really think he liked that drive. Most of these plays are scripted. The first 15 to 17 plays are scripted, and it looked like it worked to perfection. Coach Leipold knows that his, his guys are coming off an emotional win. Sometimes it's hard to play back-to-back -back games and win, but right now they look fired up. Eastern Michigan's defense looks a little bit off balance. And part of it is their defensive line can't get any pressure because Tyree Jackson is releasing the football so quickly. But they're going to have to be able to match up man-to-man -man sometimes with Johnson and these other receivers. But that's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Well, that offensive line for Buffalo has yet to allow a sack this year, one of only 12 teams in the country to be able to make that claim coming into the weekend. And they look good on that first drive. So Mitchison will kick off. Matthew Sexton, Blake Bannum. Back deep to receive for the Eagles. This is Sexton who calls a fair catch. And you hear some moans and groans through UB Stadium because, Marcus, I don't think word has gotten out that 2018 has a new rule <laughs> that on a kickoff you can call for a fair catch. And the ball will be moved out to the 25 yard line and in talking to coach Creighton on our conference call this week he said hey he's not a smart guy but he'll take it on the 25 versus the <laughs> 17 or the 18 at any given moment so that's that's their baby right now and, and and he said that they would prefer to start at the 25 and in this conference they're in fourth place with average start of field position mm. well again as mentioned Eastern Michigan has yet to return a kick this year as the flags fly. As a matter of fact, in their win at Purdue last weekend, they had zero returns of any type, no punt returns either. Ball start, number 62 offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. I like that. The polite running back, Ian Erickson, bumped into the official and, oh, sorry, sorry. Got to be nice to that guy. <laughs> the referee, Greg Sujak. City South, the freshman from Quebec, called for the penalty. And now we've got movement again in the neutral zone. Let's see if it was Sow again or if this one will go against Buffalo. Offside by contact, number 93 defense. Five yard penalty remains first down. So this is Shibuzi Onwuka, who his coach calls, quote, a big ball of muscle. You see him right to the right of your screen. Those defensive linemen need to watch the football. Chabuzzi knows better. He's been around for two years now, and he's made a ton of plays. So he understands how to watch that football. Yeah, this guy didn't have any Division I football opportunities as Ian Erickson goes over the top. I mean, on, on Wuka is from Bowie, Maryland, and came to Western New York to be a wrestler. He went to Niagara Community College to wrestle and then transferred to Buffalo with the idea that I'm going to wrestle at UB, but it didn't work out. So he was looking for another outlet, decides to walk on, unbeknownst to the coaching staff, to the football team as a linebacker. And as you mentioned, two years later, he's the starting defensive tackle. <laughs> it's good player development. Play action. Uyghurs on the out. Finds his man. It's Blake Bannum, one of the captains out of Creighton Durham Hall in St. Paul, Minnesota. Let's take a look at the replay. Watch Tyler Wiegers release the football at the highest point. Nice touch pass. Good route by Bannum, who's had a good two-game total at 14 catches for 202 yards. That's been his favorite target. He also likes Arthur Jackson, so keep an eye on number 89. But that's a great pass on after the penalty. From the 42-yard line, first and 10. Keep it on the ground, Erickson. And the polite senior running back from Clarkston, Michigan, able to pick up a yard. Not a whole lot there. Eastern Michigan wants to run the ball a lot better, even though they're 2-0. and They've almost become a pass-happy football team, but they were able to run the football at the end of the game against Purdue last week to really ice it. You saw Ian Erickson getting that carry. So they mix in the run. But they just don't, they haven't done it at the level that they want to so far. Yeah, they really need more consistency on this side of the football out of that running attack. More flags. 
Eastern Michigan has had zero rushing touchdowns. Number 74, offense remains second down. That goes against Steve Nielsen, the right tackle. But uh, the only running back with a touchdown is Breck Turner. He's third on the depth chart. So Erickson and Van have really not done a lot. Erickson 64 yards rushing on 20 carries. Van 90 yards on 19 carries. That's Van, number five, a senior from South Bend. On second and 14. Give it to Van. He's met in the backfield and dropped by Cameron Lewis, the senior from Detroit. See Cameron Lewis coming off that edge to the right of your screen. It, it opened up perfectly for him, and he disguised his blitz from the second level. He had a big game last week. Matt, defensive player of the week in his division. Four tackles, two interceptions. A young man who's had three surgeries in the last calendar year, one on his thumb, two on a broken arm. He wasn't medically cleared until just a few weeks ago, right before the start of the season. Again, third and 14, passing down. Uyghurs flushed from the pocket, being chased. But he's going to have enough room for a first down. Ladarius Mack chased him out of the pocket, but nobody else was in pursuit. Yeah, that's a good run by Uyghurs, and his decision-making has been exceptional all season. He looked down the field. Nothing was there. Buffalo was playing man-to-man -man coverage. That's why you see corners chasing receivers. And then the defensive end loses contain. And Weegers is deceptively quick, meaning he can get out of trouble. He's not a running quarterback, but he can move and use his legs. And you saw it right there. Yeah, the graduate transfer from Iowa. Pass a little low to Arthur Jackson the third. They say he was able to catch it cleanly just about the 40-yard line. So a pickup of three. Now you mentioned Arthur Jackson the third. Uh, Junior from Oakland, California, has really brought a lot to this team so far this year. Yeah, he came up big last week on a game-winning drive, but Jackson is a guy that catches the football well. Uyghurs, once again, getting outside of the pocket. He wanted the post corner to ban him. Good coverage downfield by Buffalo, so he settled for the check down. Offensive coordinator as they keep it on the ground. Going to be short of a first down. Offensive coordinator Aaron Keene told us this week on our conference call that Arthur Jackson practice last week with a sense of urgency and it showed up versus the Boilers and as you said he went out and had six catches for 84 yards setting up the game winning field goal with a big catch and you know from your days a couple of decades ago at uh, the big house you practice well you usually play well exactly right you practice well you're a guy that is prepared coaches trust you a lot more and that catch he made was on fourth down mm -hmm. the 28 yarder really kept the drive going. Bryce Kemp is the tight end for Eastern. Slotted to the right. Four receivers. Uyghurs has time. Looks like somebody may have gotten a piece of it as he released the football. That'll bring up fourth down. That's a good stop by Buffalo. And, and, and on the back end, those secondary guys stayed stride for stride with these Eastern Michigan receivers. Buffalo feels like they can play man to man and they're going to send some heat after Uyghurs because you don't want to give him time to throw the football. He's completing, he completes 77% of his passes. You're going to have to get some people in his face or he'll pick you apart. Well, Uyghurs was a four-star rated recruit out of Detroit Country Day who chose Iowa over Rutgers but uh, played very little for the Hawkeyes over the last four years and decided to come to Eastern Michigan, basically coming back home. He is going to be Drop, ball goes loose out of bounds. And it is Buffalo football. They call it an incomplete pass. Jordan Collier, the senior linebacker, along with James Patterson, freshman linebacker, bringing the heat for Buffalo's defense. We'll step away from UB Stadium. 7-0 Bulls. Back in Buffalo with the Bulls on top 7-0 in this MAC opener for a couple of undefeated teams. The Bulls 2-0, the Eagles 2-0, and the UB offense back onto the field being guided by Tyree Jackson, who was a perfect 5-for-5 five five on that touchdown scoring drive to begin the game. Yeah, he looked very efficient. Looked like a guy who's in command of this offense, completing pass left and right. I was really impressed with the deep ball on third and one. 
which set up the touchdown. Yeah, that covered 45 yards to Anthony Johnson on play action. Goes back to Johnson at midfield. Fights his way for another three yards. Another productive first down play for UB. They're using that short passing game, Doug, on first down to really get into a manageable second down. You see the second team AP preseason All-American. First player named that in school history. I mean, this man here, Johnson, is a big time wideout. Pass the other way to George Rushing, and the former Badger has himself a first down. One other point, again, Tyree Jackson has not been sacked this year, and so far he has been clean, and, and that's saying something when you've got an edge rusher, a couple of them for Eastern Michigan, like Max Crosby and Jeremiah Harris. So far, Awasika and Kazarzak on the ends of the offensive line have done their job here tonight. Then the play calling, too, has also been quick passing. When you go quick passing game, it really neutralizes great pass rushers like you stated. Emmanuel Reed picks his way across the line of scrimmage. He picks up about three yards. Well, Eastern Michigan has had a recent history of excellent defense. Last year led the MAC in total defense and scoring defense. Big part of the, uh, the win at Purdue last weekend. They forced four fumbles. And you know, not uh, since 1988, it's 30 years since Eastern Michigan has held three straight opponents to 20 or fewer points. They could do that here today, but you know what? Buffalo has pretty much had positive yardage on every single snap so far. Well, they're doing running back by committee. You see Buffalo rushing see, coming into today. You see Marks getting the bulk, bulk of the carries. Had a big game last week, career high 138 yards. Got Hawkins and Reed and Patterson. So when you have a plethora of running backs like that, Doug, you can run anything you want offensively, and guys will always stay fresh. And Jared Patterson is only 5'9", 195 pounds, a freshman from Glendale, Maryland, whose twin brother, James, is one of the starting linebackers for Buffalo. Another quick pass completed. Antonio Nunn. And that's a Buffalo first down. And you'll see a five yard the stick route is what it's called. The receiver just runs five yards and turns around right at the sticks. And that's what Buffalo's running. Eastern Michigan's playing a soft zone coverage because they don't want to get ran by and give up a big pass. But eventually, you're going to have to roll up, probably play a little cover two, a little soft, or give a hard corner on the outside and force Jackson to throw the ball vertically down the middle instead of pitch and catch on the perimeter. One of the other offensive options for Buffalo we've not called yet is the tight end Tyler Mabry, preseason first team all match. Instead, they keep it on the ground to read one more time, getting some tough yards inside, down to the 25. Thank you, buddy. This, this offensive line is dominating right now. They're getting a great push. You see a six yard gain behind the center, O'Hagan. He's a state champion wrestler. And Jack Cordela, those guys are playing low with their pad level, with the mean face, all painted up, looking like Roman Reigns or somebody out here. <laughs> Back to the red shirt, freshman Kevin Marks. He busts it outside, inside the 10-yard line. Finally tackled by Ike Calderon. Buffalo knocking on the door again. Watch the young fella get the handle. I like the vision right there to stay alive in the second effort. On the outside, Eastern got caught in a twist. Defensive linemen lost their leverage. After the 17-yard gain, here goes Jackson. Directing traffic, throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo! Able to keep the play alive long enough until K.J. Osborne could find an opening. K.J. Osborne, way to stay alive, young fella, in the back of the end zone. The thing I really like is watch Jackson the entire time. His first read got taken away, stayed alive, didn't choose to run. He's pointing like a choir director, telling everybody where to go, and it just became a scramble drill. And as a defense, it's really hard to stay with your man when you have a quarterback who can run, but you just have to keep your eyes on your guy. That's a great pass, great catch. Well, ever since suffering, a knee injury last year here against Florida Atlantic when Tyree Jackson got bent over backwards, missed a few games. 
that has been part of his maturation that now he understands I really need to be a pocket quarterback, pocket passer, and he continues that evolution. Tyree spent time this past July at the Manning Passing Academy getting hands-on experience with Archie, Peyton, and Eli Manning. And according to Buffalo Offensive Coordinator Andy Kotelnicki, Jackson came back and said, I belong. It was an eye-opener, and, you know, I'm, an, I'm a MAC quarterback, but I'm with the SEC guys and the ACC guys, and I belong. And we all know that the MAC has produced a ton of great quarterbacks, and I think he's fallen right along the same line. Tyree Jackson with the touchdown pass. Buffalo up 14-zip. Buffalo has started this season with a home win over Delaware State, 48-10 here at UB Stadium. And the, uh, the big win, at least for this program, at Temple. They beat the Owls 36-29. And Marcus, while that may not really register nationally, that last week to beat Temple on the road was a really big win for this program. That's huge. And, and if you want to be a championship team, you have to do two things, win close games and win on the road. Coach Leipold understands that. And that's what they pulled off last week. So right now, they're riding high. And you can see it in their 14-point lead on both sides of the ball. And the next couple of weeks, Buffalo will have two more non-conference opportunities at Rutgers and then home against Army. As that kick goes flying out of the end zone, Eastern Michigan will have it when we come back. Bulls with a 14-0 lead here at UB Stadium. In the preseason poll, Eastern Michigan was picked in the MAC West to finish fourth. Northern Illinois one, Toledo two, Western Michigan three. Great start to the year for Coach Chris Creighton, but right now they find themselves stuck 14 on the road. Marcus, what do they do here to try and get some momentum? Well, they know they've been in a lot of close games throughout the last two seasons. And right now, Coach Creighton wants his guys to focus, fight, and finish. But offensively, I think they need to take a page from Buffalo's playbook use some short intermediate passing but then on third down take advantage of the man-to-man -man defense the way Uyghurs did with his legs. Eastern Michigan opened the year on August 31st uh, with a big win over Monmouth non-league. Pass incomplete trying to set up the screen and then uh, the big signature win at West Lafayette Indiana against the Purdue Boilermakers 20 to 19 on September 8th and for Eastern Michigan Beating a Big Ten team is not that big of a deal, relatively speaking, because it's become second nature. You know, Eastern has the same number of Big Ten wins, two since the start of last year. Same number as Maryland, Indiana, and Minnesota, and more than Illinois coming into this week. How about that? Yeah, they don't mind playing the underdog, and they've been into some wars. I mean, some straight-up street fights that they came up on the short end of the stick. But, but one of the reasons that this game is lopsided offensively is because they, they're struggling to run the football. So defensively, Coach Brian Borland, the defensive coordinator for Buffalo, is saying, man-to-man -man pressure, you don't have anything to keep me honest. But the one thing Eastern can do is they have Mike Glass, too, as a backup quarterback. And so don't be surprised if we see him come in for the same This is Tyler Wiegers, flushed from the pocket again, hesitates, and now goes down. Yeah, the coaches told us this week that the plan coming into the year was that Tyler Wiegers and Mike Glass would do more sharing of the quarterback job, but because Wiegers has played so well the first two weeks, we haven't seen as much of Glass, but you're right, there's a good possibility that number nine will be coming into the ball game before too long. Both of these quarterbacks are very capable. There's Mike Glass. You see him getting the football starting to warm up because right now this offense can't move the football vertically down the field. They're struggling to run it, but then... They, this Buffalo secondary is really crowding the line of scrimmage and making it difficult. See the six-foot quarterback out of St. Louis. He can make some things happen with his legs, and they have a couple of packages that may call for his services. And they have gadget plays, they have trick plays, and he's the guy that they oftentimes like to do those plays with and take advantage of some of his versatility. We've also got a third-string quarterback for Eastern Michigan who we could see today, Jairus Grissom. He's a true freshman from Dearborn Heights, Michigan. But right now it is going to be, by all appearances, Mike Glass. But first, the punt coming up. I know, check that. There he is, okay. It is the punter out onto the field, Jake Julian. 
Sophomore from Barrie, Ontario, standing at his 18-yard line. Osborne changes direction, gets a block. Nice return for Buffalo. Now where Eastern Michigan has elected, for the most part, Marcus, not to return punts and kicks this year. Buffalo gets a very nice return. It's a great individual effort by Osborne, but he's going to pick up a key block on the left side of your screen. And you'll see right there, that's called a body block. He actually hit him in the side, almost in the back. But when your hands are in the air, the referee will never throw a block in the back. That's how Osborne was able to get another eight yards. Yeah, 17 yards playing against his hometown school, KJ Osborne. Buffalo's offense out for the third time this quarter. They've had two sustained touchdown drives to begin the game. Tyree Jackson, time to throw. He goes deep down the sideline and off the hands of Charlie Jones, a redshirt freshman from Deerfield, Michigan, who the Buffalo staff is very high on. You see why. I mean, he can stretch a defense in a hurry. That actually was a good route that he ran against Kevin McGill. Ball was a little bit high and outside, but you see Buffalo's not afraid to go deep on first down. They want chunks of yardage but they can also drive methodically. You see them getting a call from the sideline, and it's really tough when a team can run it and throw it. So you're just at their mercy, and right now Eastern Michigan's playing over heels. This is March, wide open hole. He uh, nearly busted it. An ankle tackle by the free safety, Jalen Phelps, kept, kept that one from going to the house. Yeah, just a simple trap play. Watch your right guard. A Cordela, then you see the center. Those guys, just a nice trap play from the backside. Picked up a good block from Tyler Neighbor. Here's Kevin Marks again, and again on first down. Positive yardage. It's a five yard pickup, and Buffalo gets itself into a really nice spot on second down. See these, see these rushing yards are body blows. To me, this is a heavyweight fight. And five yards of crack on, on offense are like body blows. And then you go up top for the knockout punch. That's what Buffalo's doing right now offensively. Well, the first quarter was all about Buffalo throwing those body blows. How will Eastern Michigan respond? The Bulls opening up Mac play. Off to a quick start. Our own Mel Kuyper Jr. lists. Tyree Jackson is the fifth best underclassman quarterback in the country. Here's some of that arm strength as we show you the highlights from the first quarter. Right off the back foot on the deep ball, and you come back, pound it inside with marks. But Jackson can make any throw, and he's tall. He can see over the line. You see marks with the spin move, stiff arm. He's a complete running back, too. Had a big day last week. You see Jackson staying alive. Crosby loses contain. Jackson is directing traffic. Throws a touchdown. Jarrett Patterson has become back live into the football game for the first time. Again, he's the fraternal twin of James, the starting outside linebacker for Buffalo. And you know what? Jarrett was the number one running back in high school for St. Vincent Pilati there in Maryland. His brother was the number two running back and the third string guy. Blake Corum, who is, uh, oh, by the way, right now being recruited by USC, South Carolina, Baylor, Georgia. These guys were ahead of him. <laughs> now, of course, they're a couple of years older than Corum, who is class of 2020. Anthony Johnson. Ross Williams brought him down. Buffalo likes this one-on-one -on -one matchup with A.J. Johnson, and he's just taking what the defense gives him. He can run any route. And, and you can see why he's a potential first round draft pick with his body in his hands. Jackson 10 of 11 passing. Didn't quite connect there with Johnson. Nice coverage by Kevin McGill, the junior from Waldorf, Maryland. See all the time in the clean pocket Jackson has. He gets on his toes, lets it fly high and outside. The body control on the sideline by Jackson is very impressive. But that ball was placed for only the sideline or Jackson was going to catch it. And he actually had a step on Ross Williams, too. Jackson goes out. Zach Lefebvre is in the game at linebacker.
Big play in the backfield, nowhere to run. It's a good blitz from the second level. Jalen Pickett, six foot, 224 pound wheel linebacker. It's a good call by defensive coordinator Neil Nethery. Because now you get Buffalo in a third and two sticks situation at third and 12. That's a good call on second down. Yeah, one thing Eastern Michigan defensively this year doesn't have is a ton of size. Marks makes one nice cut, gain of four. And I found it interesting that Neil Netherly, the uh, defensive coordinator, said that our keys against Buffalo are going to be stop the run and explosive plays. But he said Tyree Jackson's height, again, Tyree's six foot seven is an issue for this team because Eastern's blitzers are short by design. So when they're coming at him, he can see right over top of him. And he can throw over top of him, too. And that's the one thing. And Tyree Jackson is no easy task of getting on the ground for anybody on that field. When you're 6'7", 245 plus pounds, and you're strong, it's going to take more than one guy. Here's Jackson again with a clean pocket. Finds his tight end in stride. Tyler Mabry with his first catch of the day inside the 20 yard line you see great offensive line pass protection they're picking up all the stunts and the twist and that's and that's that's what makes him a pro potential quarterback to be able to thread the needle screen pass complete jackson to johnson and i think what the defensive coordinator was saying in in that the people who they'd be blitzing you look in the defensive secondary for eastern it's 5 11 5 9 5 10 5 11 and 6 2 their linebacker six feet six three at the mid-american level when you are recruiting of course you'd love to have bigger guys but you would prefer to have speed quickness and ability over pure size i guess but in so doing when you face a guy with the size and skill set of tyree jackson you're up against it yeah length is is something that's hard to come by especially on defense. A lot of taller guys play offense. As you see, Ike Calderon make that play. He's, he had a breakout game last week. Seven tackles, a forced fumble, and a pass breakup, fumble recovery. This is the area of the field where Eastern Michigan really played well last week. Ike Calderon had some big plays. Isaiah Calderon third. He's getting a chance to start the last couple of weeks because of a big injury. On third down, doesn't look like Marks got to where he needed to be. Eastern is playing right now without Brody Hoying, their all-conference junior safety who didn't play last week at Purdue because of a shoulder injury, and so Calderon getting more reps, but he's a fifth-year guy. Calderon is very versatile on fourth down. They might have to measure really close. Really surprised Coach Lipo didn't elect to go for the three. Get that three score lead, but Eastern Michigan, you see Max Crosby thinks they got the stop. But that interior, Big Tyler, LaBarbera, Desmond Kelly, they got low and made a big stop. Wow. Well, where they may not be the biggest team in the MAC, they certainly do not lack for toughness up front. LaBarbera, Kelly, Harris, Crosby get the stop on downs. Rather than going for what would have been a 27 28 yard field goal Buffalo elects to go for a first down on fourth and they come up short. Yeah Eastern Michigan got a good stand right there. Coach Lipo really liking his offense and I really think he could have got three points maybe something out of that drive to extend his lead to a three score lead Eastern Michigan are the cardiac kids and they don't need much of a small match to really ignite their fire. We'll see how they respond. And so Mike Glass in at quarterback, taking his first snap, and he hands it off to Breck Turner, junior running back out of Norwalk, Ohio, for a short game. Well, they're going to need a little bit of breathing room for Mike Glass to be able to do what he needs to do. You see the numbers last week. And he's a guy that they like to run the zone read, quarterback keep. He can also throw it. I mean, he's a very accurate passer, too. So don't be surprised if you see a little bit of play action with Mike or sprint out pass to get him on the perimeter in a run pass situation. Screen pass with a flag down is completed. Let's see if it stands. Tackle made by Khalil Hodge, who, by the way, leads the country in tackles over the last couple of years. Let's see if he gets a tackle here or if that play is wiped out. 
see Hodge running to the football. Former basketball player in high school. Young man from Stockton, California, played uh, a year of junior college ball in San Francisco, and, and what a find he has been for this Buffalo program. Yeah, he's a freakish athlete. You see the call is going to be probably a legal formation, not necessarily a false start. Eastern Michigan's guys really weren't lined up correctly to the wide side of the field. Illegal formation. Too many men in the backfield on the offense. The penalty is declined. The play stands third down. Well, Chris Creighton and his staff knew they had big shoes to fill after last year with the graduation of the program's all-time career passing yardage leader, Brogan Rovac. So they went out and got a couple of transfers. Uyghurs, the grad transfer from Iowa. Glass, the junior from Southwestern College in Southern California. On third down. Roback, by the way. Did you watch Hard Knocks on yeah. HBO? I watched a little bit of it. Roback did well for himself as an undrafted free agent. Glass fires a strike for a first down. Number 11, Isaac Holder, the junior from Tampa. Well, here's a look at Brogan Roback last year, who was just outstanding for the Eagles. You see the numbers for his career, and you can see why NFL scouts and teams are still very much interested in him. This is Blake Bannum. It was funny in talking to uh, the offensive coordinator for Eastern Michigan about Brogan Roback. He said, of course, he and the team all watched uh, Hard Knocks, and he said, I'm not going to say anything to get on TV, apparently. That's what... <laughs> Brogan said, and, and he winds up being one of the four or five real stars of the show, but uh, he uh, was cut, of course, by the Cleveland Browns right before the start of the regular season, but this week had three more workouts, including one with Tampa Bay, so it's uh, quite possible the all-time passing leader in Eastern Michigan history will find his way back into the NFL on a practice squad, perhaps, before too long. Brett Turner. Young Turner getting a chance to get some carries. Now Eastern Michigan's offense has a little bit of breathing room. They're not in third and long. And they really feed off their defense. Like last week in, in the fourth quarter, they got a big fourth down, well, missed field goal that could have probably iced the game. The offense used that momentum, carried them down the field, and now you're seeing a little bit of that spark in this offensive drive with Mike Glass. See the stacked receivers at the top is to defeat man coverage. But Glass goes down. And it's number 41, Chuck Harris, along with number 50, Malcolm Kuntz. And the number 41 around here means something. This is the one week that Harris is wearing that special number. He had the strip sack late in the fourth quarter that clinched the Temple win. And there's his first sack here tonight. And on Thursday, we learned that he would get to wear that special number 41 as decided by head coach Lance Leipold as they honor, continue to honor the memory of one of their late teammates. Osborne giving ground. He finally picks it up at about the 10. Dangerous play, but he's going to try and make something out of it. K.J. Osborne with flags down, finally dropped at the 23. Got a little bit of laundry on the field. But you want to talk about Mr. Electric. K.J. Osborne going against his hometown team. The tricky return. Real gutsy. Gutsy. The decision to pick the ball up. You see the, bit, the ability to cut in space and make people miss. But once you start doing this, then you're going to set some of your blockers up. During the return. Illegal block in the back. Number 24. Return team. Half the distance to the goal. First, media timeout. So that penalty against Jonathan Hawkins. Buffalo has it when we come back. Two and a half years ago during an off-season workout, Buffalo edge rusher Solomon Jackson passed away, and his former teammates and coaches continue to honor his memory and legacy by keeping his locker intact. And by chance, he's right next to Chuck Harris's locker. And Chuck was the one chosen by the coaching staff to wear that number 41 this week on the field. And uh, Chuck, in honor of his 
former teammate, former locker mate, Buddy, makes a big play. His sack helps to force the punt that gets the football back to UB. And you know what? It is a process that Lance Leipold, the head coach for Buffalo, takes very, very seriously, keeping that locker as it was the day Solomon passed away. And, and the boots that we see there, the coach was just telling us the other day, he, they, they're not expensive boots, they weren't special boots, they were his boots that we had just gotten, and Solomon had just put them there when he passed away in February of 2016, and so, by golly, they're gonna keep it just as Solomon had it that last day. Hats off to the Buffalo program for honoring their teammate, C. Harris, making plays, playing inspired football, had the big strip sack last week to help win the game. Emmanuel Reed, the redshirt junior from Crestview, Florida, with another running opportunity. Game five, third down and a long two. See that Eastern Michigan defense now has an opportunity to get off the field on a short field. They're going to have to be a little more aggressive defensively because their offense flipped the field for them. Eight on the play clock for Tyree Jackson, the fourth year junior quarterback. Pass is caught, but that's going to be short. Tyler Mabry going to be about a half yard shy. Ike Calderon with another tackle. You want to talk about a big stop for Eastern? That was it right there. You see Ike coming up, making a hit in man coverage on Mabry in the flat area. And that's a big stop for Eastern Michigan. And now they've got a little bit of momentum. They should get the ball in decent field position and slow that Buffalo offense down just enough to keep fighting. And let's see if Blake Bannum, the return man, will get an opportunity to try and make something happen, but he is pushed back, picks it up on the bounce, and here he goes from the 20. Eastern Michigan's defense gives its offense a chance to get on the board. Chuck Harris wearing number 41 here tonight, but last week he was in his customary number 92 at Temple when his strip sack helped to seal the big win for UB. You see him coming off the edge, getting his eyes and his arms up, making a big play. And Buffalo had just took the lead under a minute to go. And that's a pass rusher's dream in a two-minute situation. That's a big-time stop. Helped them secure the win. And Marcus, I'm always amazed by guys like Chuck Harris, who didn't start playing football growing up in Detroit until he was in high school and coming out of Southfield High School. He only had two Division I offers here and at the FCS level at Morgan State. And now, four years later, he is a legitimate NFL prospect. Legitimate NFL prospect, and you see why. And he has good size, 6'4", 255, as you see, big Justin Brandon, big fella out of Indianapolis getting some penetration and a tackle for loss. And Chuck Harris rooting on his teammates. You see Chuck Harris on the bench because Buffalo rotates two and three waves of defensive linemen every series, and they do the same thing in, in the secondary. Yeah, they've got great depth on that side of the football for sure. Flash's pass is caught. Down the sideline goes Arthur Jackson the third, and is anybody going to catch him? No! A 74-yard touchdown strike from Glass to Jackson. Just a simple five-yard outcut route in man-to-man. -man. As you see, Tatum slack fall down. You can't miss tackles, and if you do, you better miss it when the guy's going out of bounds. But that's the stuff that Archer Jackson, Jackson brings to the table. Coach Aaron King told us, you spoke about the preparation, his enthusiasm and sense of urgency. I like how he tight roped the sideline. And then you see the speed. And now Eastern Michigan's back in this football game, believing that they still have a chance. They never quit, and their motto is focus, fight, and finish. Well, the uh, word momentum has changed dramatically after Buffalo had driven the field again. They opted at the 10-yard line to, instead of taking the points, they went for a first down on fourth and one. Eastern Michigan's defense stopped them and then has punched right back, a counter punch to make it now with the PAT. Flags on the play. We got flags down. So they'll do it again. 
Ball start. Number 62. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. Replay the try. That's the freshman from Quebec City South for the second time tonight. But these two teams, Eastern Michigan and Buffalo, were part of what was a memorable weekend in week two for the MAC. Both picking up huge road victories, non conference wins. No such signature wins for the league so far here in week three, although they did have some opportunities. This afternoon, Kent State went to uh, Penn State and lost to the Nittany Lions big 63-10. Toledo hosted the Miami Hurricanes and lost 49-24 as we take another look at Arthur Jackson the third. Well, give Mike Glass some credit for coming into this game. He didn't start. He threw an out cut to Arthur Jackson the third. Watch the speed. He's looking back. Then he gave us a little bow at the end, celebrating with his teammates. That play right there was huge for Eastern Michigan's offense. Now they're only down one score, but he had a big game last week. Six catches, 84 yards, and, you know, he's a guy that Tyler Wiegers targeted eight times last week. So he's a he's, he's a typical number 1A, 1B receiver with Blake Blanham on the other side. And the word you hear about Arthur Jackson is uh, explosive, and we saw some of that explosiveness down the sideline. 14-7, Eastern Michigan cuts the lead in half. And I also think, Doug, that it started with that third down stop by Eastern Michigan down inside the 20-yard line on their last possession. And then this offense comes back out, and they get a score. Eastern Michigan feeds off of the other side of the ball. Jesse Kelly's kick is short, and it's going to be good starting field position for Buffalo after K.J. Osborne's return out to the 30. K.J. Osborne making some things happen on special teams. He does it in the slot as well. And he's a guy that I think probably needs to get a little bit more touches offensively only because Anthony Johnson got the party started. I think Eastern Michigan's now switched their coverage up a little bit, trying to take 83 away which is going to create some opportunities for Osborne. And to help counter that, Buffalo's offensive coordinator, Andy Kotelnecki, and the head coach, Lance Leipold, as Jackson airs it out. He's got a man. It's Osborne. Touchdown, Buffalo. What was I saying about the momentum? I don't even remember. <laughs> Take a look at Tyree off the play action. Play Tyree was gone, steps to his left once again, shows you his arm strength. And as I just mentioned, KJ Osborne's a guy that can light it up, needed to be a little bit more involved in the offensive package. That time, Anthony Johnson was a decoy, but just the way Tyree threw that ball in the air, Osborne looked at him, was amazing. Second time in three games already this season that KJ Osborne has scored two touchdowns. He put two on the board against Delaware State in the opener. He's got two and counting here in week three against Eastern Michigan. Yeah, he's a good looking kid too. You see Jackson goes through all of his progressions. Wasn't afraid to take the hit from Crosby. He knew pressure was coming. He eluded it, threw it far as he could in the air. He trusts his wide receivers. KJ Osborne does the rest, but that all started up front and it trickled down to Tyree Jackson's. You know, that play showed his maturity. Right. Uh, two years ago, a year and a half ago, he would have ran that football. Now he's saying, I'm going to stay alive, eyes downfield, and I'm going to trust my guys and throw it. And, and right now, I mean, he's putting the ball right on the money, whether he's going right or left. And I'll tell you what, Marcus, the guy who is closing in on him, Max Crosby, has 13 and a half career sacks on pace to potentially become the all-time sack leader in program history, chasing Avery Brown. But as you mentioned, Tyree Jackson seemed to understand. I got time. I know Crosby's coming, but I'm going to wait for Osborne to get there. And he got rid of it just in time, and that's also part of the equation why Buffalo's not giving up a sack this year. And one of the things as a coordinator, you have to sacrifice one for the other. If you're going to rush four, then that means you got soft coverage. But if you're going to blitz, now you're in man-to-man, -man, and so you have to pick your poison when it comes to trying to stop Tyree Jackson. All right, let's turn the clock back 20 years to when you were 
in the maize and blue. <laughs> okay. Playing safety for the Wolverines. If you're facing that guy, what's your biggest challenge? Keeping the ball inside and in front. I would I would prefer for him to run up the field instead of getting outside of the defense because that's where the the sideline is. No one else is out there. So on his two long passes, Eastern has lost contained, whether it's been Crosby or Jeremiah Harris. They're not keeping the ball inside and in front. Well, let's see what Eastern's offense can do. They're going for the downs. Glass has a man. One counter punch after another. This is Bantam. And look at that. It's a 75-yard touchdown to answer the long one from Buffalo. Right now, Doug, these two teams are in the phone booth <laughs> where there's not a lot of space, and they're just knuckling up. You see Bantam, he's a big play guy, too, a converted running back. Mike Glass, I mean, hats off to this young man coming off the bench ice cold, showing that he is just as good as anybody else in this conference. He's a 1A, 1B quarterback, and I think it just depends on the situation in the game. And right now, what was what Eastern tried to do with Uyghurs wasn't working, and now with Glass in, he gives him that run threat, but he can also throw it. Blake Bantam, a former walk-on with his second touchdown reception of the year. With a clean pocket. That time, Buffalo miscommunicated on the back end. Bantam does the rest. And they're saying, hey, long ball for long ball. Whatever you can do, I can do. That's two in a row for Eastern Michigan. Their last two passes have been big ones. So right now, I, I still go back to the decision not to take the 17-point lead, right. giving Eastern Michigan a little bit of breathing room. And now, look, they're celebrating. They know they can move the ball through the air offensively if they're given enough time with Mike Glass in the pocket. And you know what? We should point out, Blake Bantam is wearing the uniform number two in a similar vein that Chuck Harris for Buffalo wears 41. Bantam was chosen August 30th by the staff to wear the number two this year for Eastern Michigan in memory of wide receiver Demarius Reed, who was shot and killed in an apparent botched robbery back in 2013. So far, so good honoring their late teammate. Blake Bantam, one of their senior co-captains, off to a terrific start to the year wearing that special number two for the Eagles. Last week, he had a 99 yard performance against the Boilermakers. And that ball just goes out of bounds. Smart decision by the return man from Buffalo, Isaiah King. So instead of trying to field it in a tough spot, lets it go out of bounds, and Buffalo will get it at the 35. And I think King got a little lucky that ball didn't bounce back towards Kick out of bounds. the coverage. Kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, first and 10. And there is number two, Blake Bannum, and he's from a very, very athletic family. You know, his uh, brother Cole played running back in Minnesota, and their sister Rachel is in the WNBA with the Connecticut Sun. She was the fourth overall draft pick in 2016 from the Minnesota Golden Gophers. So uh, sister might have trumped brothers in terms of the athletic accomplishments. <laughs> it sounds like it. I'll tell you right now, today, Bantam showed he could catch and run. Here's Osborne staying on his feet, making four men miss, and he's still going, reversing field and turning the corner. Big play for the junior out of Lincoln High School in the shadow of Eastern Michigan University. Coyote Awasika, number 73. Watch him pick up a key block. You see Osborne coming right there. There's your block in the middle of your screen. KJ like Osborne does the rest. And on these busted plays, like you said, it's so easy to, to make an illegal screen, to make you know an illegal block in the back or, or flip somebody. And, and he did a nice job to make sure he didn't do that. Another completion. Yards after catch. Nice job by Jalen Phelps to continue to fight to bring Anthony Johnson down to the turf. You see on that KJ Osborne play, the defense lost their leverage. Under no circumstances is a man supposed to catch the ball outside the defense on one numbers and return it all the way to the opposite sideline. So that's one of the things that's been hurting Eastern Michigan. As you see, Tyree Jackson's numbers very efficient, mm. 16 of 18. And those two that he missed were high and outside on deep balls. So he's playing very good football right now. 
Jackson. Here comes the rush. He steps up. Throws a perfect strike down to the 12-yard line to Charlie Jones. Well, I mentioned how in July, Tyree Jackson went down to Louisiana and participated in the Manning Passing Academy along with Archie Manning, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning. We see the maturation. We see the arm strength. He's also worked this past summer with NFL journeyman turned consultant quarterback guru Jordan Palmer on his game, and it's just part of the maturation that we've talked about. You and I saw him as a young redshirt freshman, the development last year, and now we see a much more finished product at quarterback for Buffalo. Yeah, that was a Sunday throw. The way he gunned that post-corner route, gunned the ball in a tight quarter window. I mean, he throws his guys open. Now he believes every pass is going to be completed because he knows where to place the ball, I think he's also done a fine job of reading coverages. That's something that's hard for young quarterbacks to do, but now in his third year, I don't think you can trick this one. Man. Movement on the line. Illegal snap. Number 77 offense. Five yard penalty remains second down. That's the senior captain from Seaford, New York, James O'Hagan. Hey, how about the names Tyree Jackson was working with this summer? alongside Jordan Palmer. How about the starting quarterback of the Jets, Sam Darnold, and the now starting quarterback here in Buffalo of the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen. Those were two of the guys who, again, he was working with to develop his game. Those were two great ones to learn from. And I'm sure he was like a sponge working with those professional quarterbacks. Daniel Jones, the excellent quarterback at Duke, who unfortunately has suffered a collarbone injury was among those there as well. Jared Stidham from Auburn, part of it. On second down, Buffalo keeps it on the ground up the middle with Kevin Marks. Oh, here you have to be smart as a, play, as, as a play caller because you're on third and long with an opportunity to still get a first down. But as you see, Buffalo's going to need a two-score lead to even feel halfway comfortable. But you want to get some points out of this drive. You don't want to force it into the end zone and turn the ball over and come up empty, but you do at least want to get something where it makes the field goal try even more easier. Third and long to the end zone. Ball deflected, and we've got a flag as George Rushing was fighting for that football. On the coverage, Kevin McGill still pleading his play. Case. Well, third down, Eastern Michigan sent pressure, as you see. No one got close to Jackson. Looks like he had Pass good on ball defense. Defense, number four. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball would be put at the two-yard line. First and goal. Ooh, that is hard to see from that angle. It looks like it was good coverage. And maybe he had a little bit of jersey or half a second too soon with his contact. That was good coverage by young Kevin McGill. Costly. I'll take another look and see right there. Maybe the left arm on the back of the jersey. Man, that was tight coverage. First and goal. Kevin Marks into the end zone. Well, his dad was a Florida Gator, played in the early 90s for Steve Spurrier, and I think the Buffalo Bulls have themselves a good one in the making here in number five. That was a good, tough run off tackle right behind. That's that left side, Miles Worthy, Kizarzik, those guys got a good push. Jalen Phelps came up from his safety position, and he didn't bring much lumber. It's tough to stop a guy running full speed on the one-yard line. I should correct myself. That was George Rushing, whose daddy was a uh, Florida Gator. Kevin Marks with the touchdown. Big answer again for Buffalo. Tell you what, Kevin Marks out of Norview High School in Norfolk, Virginia. There are already comparisons around here to the former Bull who spent several years with the Green Bay Packers, James Starks, in terms of running style, size, gait. They think this young man has a huge upside. You, know, you talk about how coaching staffs find players from outside of their region. Mm -hmm. Kevin Marks and his high school teammate, Isaiah King, now his college teammate, they were spotted at a satellite camp in New York City by UB defensive tackles coach Tim Edwards. 
They struck up a relationship. You liked what he saw, and all of a sudden you got two guys from Virginia up here in Buffalo making things happen. It's all about relationships. I mean, when you hire the right people, the right assistant coaches, and they can go out and relate to kids and talk to them and stay on them. Everybody plays on TV now. The scholarship is the same everywhere. Most of these young players want to play. So to be able to go to Virginia and snatch a kid out of there with Virginia Tech and Virginia and some of those other schools that recruit in that area, because Virginia's a hotbed for talent. And of course, the greatest Buffalo Bull of all time, Khalil Mack, was a steal out of the state of Florida, by a previous coaching re regime here at Buffalo. You just never know. Well, let's take another look at the pass that set up the touchdown. Watch the offensive line. See Jackson with a clean pocket. You see the left side <laughs> holding off the fort. But then when you have a great quarterback and you give him time, that's hard for any defense to stop. And now you see why Buffalo hasn't given up a sack all year. It has a lot to do with the timing of the pass, but it has a, more to do with a pocket and having five great ones up front playing in one unit. And Kazar's at the left tackle, highlighted there. On first down for Eastern Michigan, it's Breck Turner, the junior from Norwalk, Ohio. You know, one thing Eastern Michigan has not gotten is a game-breaking type play this year yet from any of their running backs. In fact, their longest run from scrimmage so far this year was a 20-yard run from their third-string quarterback, Jairus Grissom. That's one way to get it done. Blake Bantam with a big pickup on the pass from Mike Glass. Devin Russell with the tackle, Juco transfer. Right now, Mike Glass is, is having a great half of football. And I could see why the uh, coaching staff for Eastern Michigan was so eager to get Mike Glass opportunities to get on the field. And last week, Eastern Michigan was able to get a, a late field goal in the second quarter. They wanted a touchdown, but they were able to get three points. That really helped them later on in the game. Pass a little too tall for the intended receiver, Matthew Sexton. He's only 5'11", 175. So third down and four. Sexton had a big one last week, a 75-yarder. And we showed you at the opening of the show. And Eastern believes in their two-minute offense. I mean, third and four is not something that they can't handle. Glass finally finds an open receiver, does a nice job to continue to look for his options. It's Gunnar Oaks, the redshirt freshman from Swanton, Ohio. <laughs> big fella needs to get out of bounds and understands it two-minute situation. Look at Mike Glass go through his progressions, looking left to right. And then the big fella, Gunnar Oaks, slipped out in the flats and made a big third down catch. Looks like that's number 50, Malcolm Kuntz. And there's a penalty marker down as well. It is a warm. There's no foul on the play. To pick up the laundry. It is a warm and muggy mid-September evening here in western New York. And this is the uh, the third Division I football game of the day in upstate New York. We saw Army with a nice win down at West Point over Hawaii. Of course, the big game two hours east of here at the Carrier Dome where Syracuse blew out Florida State. And in that game, the heat and humidity was a big issue. Guys were dropping all the time with cramping and hopefully that's all we're dealing with here on a hot muggy evening in Buffalo. Yeah, I was down on the field a little bit and watching these guys warm up and all you could hear them say Doug was hydrate hydrate that's all you <laughs> heard I, I actually was walking into the locker room it's good to see Coons get up and walk on his own I was walking into the tunnel with uh, Tyree Jackson and all you heard from the Buffalo locker room was I drink, I drink, I drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to my phone, which is never wrong, it says it's still 80 degrees at 7.30 here in Buffalo. First down, Eastern Michigan. Glass going to tuck it and run. Has to lower his head. 
He's dropped by Ladarius Mack. Of course, we talked about Khalil Mack. Ladarius is his younger brother. Only 6'1", 230, but he's got some of the same traits as his older brother, the uh, great linebacker, lineman for the Chicago Bears. Same kind of face, same kind of twitch, same kind of knack to get after the quarterback, but he's not as big as his big brother, but he's really become an impact performer here for Buffalo. Well, he's a freak. I mean, look at Khalil. I love the face mask. You want to talk about one of the best defensive ends in the game? You're looking at him. Came right out of this program. Big time guy. He almost beat Ohio State by himself mm -hmm. a few years ago. I mean, they were one hand to the face penalty away from putting the Buckeyes away deep in their own territory. But you see his younger brother, his numbers on the year, speaking to the coaches. They said on our conference call, this guy here has freakish athletic ability. He doesn't worry about trying to live up to his brother's name. He's a former basketball player. So he transferred. That's a great find for Buffalo. They believe he can be a great edge pass rusher. Even at 6'1", 230, he can flat out run. And he's getting stronger and he's learning the position. Yeah, and he and his brother are close. Khalil has spent some time here in Buffalo over the summer, brought his own personal defensive line coach with him. And he worked with his younger brother and some of the uh, UB teammates. And that can only make you better. Glass running for his life, scoots out of bounds at the 25-yard line. That's going to be about a yard short of the marker. Well, right there, young Ladarius Mack gave up contain on the right side. He's working on his pass rush. You see to the left of your screen, he jumps inside. And you can't do that when you have a guy like Mike Glass. He was able to pick up some hidden yardage there. Glass hands it off, and then the turf monster reared its ugly head. Untouched, Ian Erickson goes down. Uh, it's decision time for Eastern Michigan. They call a timeout, but Erickson is known for getting short yards runs, short yardage gains, as he did last week to help ice the game. That's a good play for Buffalo defensively at the point of attack before he went down. Now, one thing Eastern Michigan has done this year well, take care of the football. No fumbles lost coming in. And that's quite the opposite for Buffalo's defense. You know, UB the last few years under Lance Leipold has not done well taking the football away, but coming in, Buffalo had done extremely well. Atypically, number two in the country in turnover margin, forcing seven turnovers the first couple of weeks. Yeah, in 2017, they only forced 14 turnovers on the year, and 13 in 2016. So turnovers are at a premium right now for both teams, and uh, that's part of the reason they're 2-0. and oh. Give your offense more opportunities, especially when you got great quarterback play. A lot of times, chances are going to be in your favor. And it's a layered process. It's not just being able to strip somebody. You've got to be able to have all phases of your team performing well, getting pressure on the quarterback to be able to get the pick. And you have to run to the football. That's the thing. When you're recovering fumbles, that means the ball's on the ground, and you've got guys at the point of attack. Fourth down and one, Eastern Michigan going to go for it with 38 seconds left in the half. They've got it and then some. Shaq Van, big play for the Eagles. And if not for the tackle by Jordan Collier, that could have gone for six. Just a quick off tackle play, good call on fourth and one and it's his own read. Clock running down to 25 seconds, an acrobatic catch, but out of bounds. What an effort by Matthew Sexton. You remember when you were growing up in high school, Columbus, Ohio, right? Columbus, Ohio. How many varsity touchdowns you scored? Any idea? It's, it's a large number, but I'll <laughs> tell you, after I'll show you, <laughs> show you this replay, look at the effort by Sexton to try to keep one foot in the ground, and I thought the throw was even better. Glass thrown for the end zone again. Bantam reaches out, can't get it. 16 seconds on the clock. It'll bring up third down. So how many, Marcus Ray back in high school, how many touchdowns do you think you had? I only had about, about 30, and most of them came my senior year. This route right here, this post corner, was big for Eastern Michigan against Monmouth a couple of weeks ago. The red zone is where teams like to run that post corner, and it was wide open, and Glass just put a little bit too much on it. Phantom tried to run underneath it, but... I know they really want to get that play back because they missed an opportunity. And the reason I ask you that is because Matthew Sexton back in high school scored 99 touchdowns. 
Flags down, free play. Glass going to run it. Slides head first for a first down. And now let's see what the penalty is all about. There's a flag the flag. Eastern is pointing at Buffalo, saying it's against the Bulls. Offside, defense, number 94. The penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. So they decline the offsides against Miles Nicholas. First and goal, Eastern Michigan. Ten seconds on the clock. Buffalo's really struggling defensively, trying to defend Mike Glass. Glass throws, and his receiver didn't get turned around. Dylan Drummond. But another flag, and maybe there's a reason Drummond get, didn't get turned around. Yeah, there definitely was contact on the back end by Buffalo. I thought the throw was a little premature. I think Glass could have held it for one Pass more second. Defense. Number 39. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First and goal. Life's hard as a defensive back nowadays. Just because that ball's in the air, there's just no contact, and you better be in position. That wasn't bad coverage by Lewis either. Keep in mind, Eastern has a timeout, so they can still run the ball here and get two shots at the end zone. That's what they do, but they fumble. Glass picks it up. He's Come down at the two with one second on the clock. Did they get the timeout? Of course, the folks here in Buffalo think they didn't. The Bulls are starting to run off the field. But, but Chris Creighton ran out there, and, uh, and, and he talked to one of the officials, and he shook his head. Yeah, like, I think they're going to give him the timeout, but... Yeah, one of the officials just waving all the Buffalo players back to the sideline while they sort it out. Of course, Lance Leipold doesn't think they got it. Oh, man, Mike Glass. That was a great effort, just a quarterback running back exchange. Ruling on the field is that the runner was down. Eastern Michigan called timeout with one second left. Please set the game clock to one second. That's their third timeout. Oh, we're going to take a look at this, Doug, and see. See the port exchange. Glass was trying to read, kept, kept the ball too long. Right there, it looked like Glass had possession when he was on the ground. But you can't call timeout until Drummond secures the fumble. Now, right there, Drummond has it. You see Coach Creighton, he looked like he almost scored a touchdown away. <laughs> I don't know where the coach's box is, but he showed his athleticism getting down there. And what a big break for the Eagles to get another shot on the goal line. Fortunate enough to recover the fumble, first of all. Yeah. Second of all, Coach Creighton had enough upstairs to run down there and say, wait a minute, we got one more, give me a timeout. You know, Coach Creighton was a Hall of Fame quarterback in his days at uh, Division III Kenyon College in Ohio. Boy, Lance Leipold is not at all pleased. Let's take a look again from the reverse angle. He held on to it just a little bit too long. And that's what Mike Glass gives you, that zone read option. But the ball's all over the place. You'll see Coach run into the screen from the left side. I don't know how he got down there so fast, but he was on the field before that play was even over. And part of it, too, was we don't know if he told the official, I want a timeout as soon as the play's dead. Right. Because that's that's a lot of, you know, that's something that a head coach can do is say, hey, give me a timeout when the play's over. So you don't have to call it during the play or right after it. Right now, our referee's looking right here to see when Mike Glass recovers the fumble, right there. Is he down? Is the play over? That's where Eastern Michigan may have caught a break because the possession is over. He has, he has the ball. He's on the ground. There's contact. Ball spits back out. That play's over. So right here is where we're looking. That's what the, that's what the official's looking at right now to see was the play dead and what was the time on the clock when that contact was made with Mike Glass on the ground. That's a tough one. It is. And folks, down a level from us in the instant replay booth are going over it with the uh, official on the field. And 
obviously a huge play. Either it's 28-14 Buffalo going to the locker room or Eastern Michigan gets one more chance to punch it in. And Eastern Michigan has been in their fair share of games where it's, come down, where it's been decided by one point. I mean, one play, one point, a bad bounce here or there. So Coach Creighton was fully prepared for his team to have to respond to some type of adversity. That was a heads up football play though by Mike Glass after the box exchange and then Drummond coming off his block to help secure the recovery for the possession. But this, they're taking a good look at it and, and, and I believe they're looking at contact and how much time is on the clock. After review, the ruling on the field was that the quarterback was down and recovered the ball. That ruling stands as he was down with two seconds to go. Eastern Michigan called timeout with one second to go. That is confirmed. They have used their last timeout. The clock will start on the ready for play, or excuse me, the clock will start on the snap. So now if you're Buffalo, you've got to flush that and just make one play. And if you're Eastern, you've got to take advantage of this huge opportunity. Oh, you have to. I, I really think if you want to go into the, half, into the locker room with some momentum and true belief you can win and the football gods are on your side, you have to get a score here. Jack Van is the running back, flanking the quarterback, Mike Glass. And now they're going to talk it over. Well, if you're Chris Creighton, what are you dialing up here? Are you trying to follow your big boys up front in the A-gaps, Hickey, Tallman, those guys, are you going to try and use a little trick play, use the athletic ability, and what we've seen is a good passing arm of Mike Glass? What do you think? I think you use Mike Glass's legs on this play. I, I, I think going back to the play that was a fumble, the zone read, and just make it a designated call, because everyone on defense is going to pinch inside. The zone read was actually there. When you look, it was just a bad exchange. That was going to be a touchdown. Mike Glass, I think, is going to score. I think Buffalo took the fake. They bit on it extremely hard. I wouldn't be surprised if offensive coordinator Aaron King comes back to that. Or you go back to the old Tebow jump pass, where you get a running quarterback towards the line of scrimmage and you dump it over to the tight end. It looks like they're in a passing formation to the wide side of the field. Now, team. They're using timeouts, playing chess right now. And Jackson was the wide receiver split out. Sexton in the slot. You talk about the jump pass. The Gators went back to a week one. You know, <laughs> Tebow's been out of college for a while, and now it's back again. <laughs> the jump pass, that's one of the hardest <laughs> plays to defend. Did you ever have to defend it? Was that around at all 20 years ago at Michigan? No, I don't think those guys were smart enough to run it. There. These guys <laughs> now have all types of gadgets and gadgets and RPO and this and that. But I think if you're Eastern Michigan, I don't know if you just try to run it from two yards away. That's a long two yards. Yeah. I mean, that, that's almost like saying on the two-point conversion when they back the ball up to the two-and-a-half yard line, can you truly get six feet, six to eight feet up the middle I think Eastern has the advantage on the outside, even with a speed option. But you have to use Mike Glass' legs and give him an option to dump it off to someone in case he gets in trouble. So I don't know if you just line up and pass it. I don't think you run it. I think you expect blitz. Buffalo's going to be in man-to-man, -man, and they're going to bring the house. Now we just come down to execution. So Eastern Michigan comes out in a different formation. Mike Glass, the junior quarterback from St. Louis. Handed off, bam, he's hit at the goal line. No signal, touchdown. And the folks here in Western New York are gonna go to the locker room extremely, extremely <laughs> unhappy. Well, Eastern's gonna be happy. Buffalo is not gonna be happy. Let's look at Shaq Van. He had another good run earlier in this drive. But right there, it's hard to see when he breaks the plane. But 
The Eagles tend to think so, right behind the big fella, Hickey, Tallman, Leah Teoda. It's a good push up front. They outmanned Buffalo this time, down in the trenches, and Shaq Van, the fifth-year guy, fell forward, kept his legs going. We're, we're probably going to review this one, too, now. So the place kicker, Chad Ryland, who booted the game-winning walk-off field goal at Purdue last week, trying to draw Eastern back within seven. It's good. And instead of going into the locker room down two touchdowns, Coach Creighton's club is down only one for both sides now, Marcus. They go in, try to regroup, and we've got ourselves a football game. Yeah, we got a good, we got a good one here. And, and they're both 2-0 for a reason because neither team yielded. Eastern Michigan could have folded up the tent in that first quarter. They're down 14-0. Jackson lighting them up. But then they found a way to get some momentum on the fourth down stop, and then they've been back and forth ever since. And now they truly believe they have a chance. And that's what happened last week against Purdue. They got a field goal late, stayed in the game. Well, this is the opener for MAC football. You know, the college basketball season is less than two months away. Earlier in this game, the men's basketball and women's basketball teams here at UB were honored. When we come back, we will have a conversation with. This college football game so far tonight has not been lacking for big plays and excitement. Buffalo jumped out to an early lead. Eastern Michigan just kept fighting. Went to their backup quarterback, Mike Glass, who was brilliant in that second quarter, but ultimately the starting quarterback for Buffalo, Tyree Jackson, is going to be heard and going to be seen. You've got to deal with him. But Mike Glass, Coming on in relief in that second quarter for Tyler Wiegers was really, really good. 8 of 11 passing, 201 yards, two touchdowns. He did take a sack, but he also showed Marcus big play capability. He sure did. He had a lot of presence in the pocket. He showed a lot of awareness, kept his eyes downfield, hit the open man, threw a great ball. Then he had a heads-up play down on the goal line to recover a fumble that led to Eastern Michigan's last touchdown. But I'd really like to be interested to see what adjustments are going to be made. I think what Buffalo was doing offensively in the first half, short pass, short pass, a little bit of run, deep ball, that's how they loosened up Eastern's defense. But on the flip side, Buffalo better find a way to stop Mr. Glass because he's been throwing some big ones. I think they maybe need to play a little bit more zone and force him to just hold the ball and make some reads versus one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's been doing a fine job. Adam Mitchison gets this third quarter underway with a deep boot. That clears the back line. And Eastern Michigan happy to take over without a return. So let's see who they started quarterback. Again, number 12 got the start and wasn't bad for Eastern Michigan, but the offense was much better with number nine in control. And here comes Mike Glass the third out of Hazelwood High School in St. Louis, Missouri. He was a four-year letter winner for the Hazelton Hawks. They went all the way to the state championship game in 2013 where they lost, but state runner-up and after going to junior college in his first year at Eastern. First and ten, Shaq Van. Gain of two. Once again, Eastern Michigan has shown big play capability again today in the passing game, but they really don't have that so far this year in the running game. Well, with that run, that off-tackle power play is going to give them a chance to slow the game down and then it's going to keep Buffalo a little bit more honest. We saw Brandon Williams coming up from his free safety spot to make that tackle, but Shaq Van is a the guy they need to get going. And then it keeps them out of negative play situations. And Van this time up the middle. They bring up third down and three. And even though these two teams obviously are league rivals in the Mid-American Conference, they don't play each other that often since they are on in different divisions. The last time they squared off was 2014 out in Michigan, and the Eagles won that game 34-24. So there are some players who played in that game who are in this one here tonight, potentially at least. Third down, pass, caught. 
Blake Bannum showing great hands and great feet to spin out to the 40 yard line before finally being dropped by James Patterson. You'll see on this replay where Blake Bannum shows you body control. He's not afraid to go across the middle. Took a shot, but showed excellent balance from his former running back days. But Mike Glass, the third, scans the field, throws a nice tight ball across the middle. First down. Glass isn't the biggest guy, only six feet tall, 212 pounds. So he's given up seven inches in the matchup, but it isn't like basketball where the quarterbacks have to guard each other. They just get it done in different ways. And his release is very high, which makes him about three inches taller. That's the one thing about Mike is he can get the ball over the line because his arm goes up high, it elevates, and then he throws a tight spiral on the way down. Big hit up front. Brandon Williams from his free safety position on the stop. When we talk about the height of the quarterback. That is one of those myths that for years and years and years you thought, well, every quarterback's got to be six foot four, but we continue to see more and more examples in modern football that that's just not the case. Especially in the evolution of the spread offense and Track one, running two. different formations. You played with a pretty good tall quarterback in college, or two, or three. But I'm thinking of Tom Brady. <laughs> Good old touchdown, Tom Brady. First down, hookup. Matthew Sexton able to make something after the catch. Move the chains for Eastern Michigan. That's a good, that's a, that's, that's a good safe call. Just a five yards stop route. More importantly, it's the yards after the catch. Sexton makes people miss the same way Arthur Jackson did on his long touchdown run. Glass just needs to get him the ball. They'll do the rest. He goes Glass with his feet, put his foot in the ground, made a man miss, and picks up seven on first down. You know, as part of my prep for this week, you and I getting together for the first time in a couple of weeks, I'm thinking, all right, Michigan Wolverines 20 years ago, what do I want to think about that? <laughs> so I pull up the old footage of the 1998 Syracuse game. Oh, wow. And watched, and it was interesting. Brady started that game, but it was all about Drew Henson. The whole broadcast was about when's Henson getting in. Get Brady out of there. Get Henson in there. And it's funny how things work out. Yeah, Tom got a raw deal his junior year, man. Henson was the number one player. High school recruit in Michigan. And things worked out for both guys. They did. Pass out of bounds. What was the perception of Tom Brady in that time at Michigan? Any inkling from his teammates that he was going to go on to maybe be the greatest quarterback of all time? No, Tom Brady's nickname was the backup. <laughs> and, and actually, he should have, you know, in my opinion, I thought he won the job in 97 as a sophomore, but, you know, Lloyd Carr chose Brian Greasy. He was a fifth year senior and stayed. We went on to win a national title, had a great defense, but we didn't know Tom Brady was going to be this good, but we knew he was good, but not this good. Third down, four yards to go. Eagles trying to tie up the football game. Glass being chased and being dropped. Great pursuit by Chibuzi on Wuka. First sack of the year, second of his career for the sophomore from Bowie, Maryland. Yeah, look to the right of your screen the way he fights through the line with the up and under with the rip. Stays after Mike Glass the third, gets him on the ground, takes him out of scoring opportunity position. Big fella. He's a load to block now. I mean, talking six foot tall, six feet, 277. He can move and he's strong and he's very quick twitch. Yeah, his coach calls him a big ball of muscle. He was a Maryland State wrestling champion in high school. The punt is going to be downed inside the five. Great kick coverage by Eastern Michigan. And Buffalo's going to have itself a long field. Terrific punt by Jake Julian. Punter Jake Julian is putting together a terrific sophomore year for Eastern Michigan. He was brilliant against Purdue last week with seven punts, five of them downed inside the 20. Just before the break, this one downed inside the five. Special teams played a huge part in Eastern Michigan's win last week. And when you have a punter 
who can flip the field and mm -hmm. pin the offense back, it makes a huge difference for your defense. Well, that was a 68-yard punt down by Jalen Phelps in coverage as Tyree Jackson throws from his own end zone. It's a big play for UB. Flag down as Osborne has a big play, and now we'll see if it stands. Yeah, the numbers for Julian so far this year is the punter. He's 14th in the country, averaging nearly 45 and that was per punt. man downfield. Number 73 offense. Half the distance to the goal remains first down. And that's a byproduct of the uh, RPOs, right? I mean, we're seeing more and more offensive linemen getting further downfield than they are legally allowed. Exactly. And and just to quickly de uh, define RPO, it's it's where the offensive lineman run block and then the quarterback makes a decision whether he's going to throw it or hand it off based on what the linebackers do. If the linebackers show they're supporting the run, then you throw it to the open window. If they stay back and play pass, you hand it to the running back. But if you hold it too long, then the lineman will get downfield. Right, because like you said, they are run blocking either way, and they can't go more than three yards past the line of scrimmage without it being an illegal man downfield. And so that's what we see when the play's timing is not what they want for it to be. And that's ruffled some feathers across the country defensively for some coaches. They don't like that play and that rule. They like when their offense does it. They just don't like yeah. to defend it. Well, I had the pleasure last week of working with Al Groh, one of the uh, great defensive minds in the history of both college and professional football. And we had quite a bit of a discussion about RPOs. And he was talking about that a lot of what is being called RPOs nowadays. It says teams aren't necessarily RPOs. They have it in there, but they are still doing a lot of more traditional basic stuff. They just mask and, you know, a lot of RPOs, it's a straight run. There is no other play off it, mm -hmm. um, even though it looks it. You want to make it look like you're going to do one or the other. Well, I tell you right here, you got these young man Reed getting some carries more than 800 yards a year ago and nine touchdowns. He's very capable out of Crestview, Florida. One of those running backs by committee that Buffalo chooses to use. This is huge for both teams, third down. I think he got it. Eastern Michigan doesn't think so. Well, we got a good spot, clearly across the line with that spot. Yeah. To Rand Rush, backup defensive end for Eastern, didn't think so. But that good push up front was enough for Buffalo to move the chains. Justin Moody, free safety, slow to get up, senior from Richmond, Virginia. He's been a very good player for this program. Second team All-American two years ago on special teams. Now used primarily just on defense. Looks like he's going to be all right. Just got banged up in the traffic on the short quarterback sneak play. So I mentioned in the first half that uh, Eastern Michigan is not playing with one of its best defensive players, Brody Hoying, their outstanding safety, who missed last week's game at Purdue. Big play there. Coming up to make the tackle, Terry Myrick. Back up Will Linebacker. Watch Max Crosby, 92, your defensive end. He'll be to the left of your screen, getting off a block right there, taking him down to the turf. Those long arms, every bit of 6'5", 250. With the blocker out front, Tyler Mabry couldn't elude the tackle. Mabry's another Ypsilanti, Michigan guy. Hometown, playing against Eastern Michigan. Saw him warming up. He's a good kid. Had his shirt off. Guy was out there catching passes. And had his music going and celebrating with the guys. He's a good blocker, too, but he's a very integral part of his offense. He and K.J. Osborne both were teammates at Lincoln High School there. And both were teammates at IMG Academy down in Florida. Marks, big hit. Got to be dropped short. No gain on the play thanks to the 
cornerback play of Ross Williams, senior from Southfield, Michigan. His father, Tyrone Williams, was a Michigan State track and field standout captain. Won a Big Ten Conference Championship back in 1988. His son, Ross, with a big play to force the punt unit for Buffalo back out of the field. Eastern Michigan needed that stop. Now they can get some good field position if Vanham can control this punt return. Evan Finnegan's punt is going to be returned. Bantam made the first two men miss. We've got a flag behind the play. It was an 11-yard return. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 14, return team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First and 10. Media timeout. We'll head to break with Buffalo holding on by seven. But when you're a Buffalo Bull and you need to hydrate, you go to the fueling station, one of the new parts of UB Stadium that's been put in for the Bulls players, and they go in there to get hydrated and get uh, their nutrition. And it's just part of this program as it builds and builds to try and keep up with the rest of the teams in the Mid-American Conference. 20 years ago in uh, Ann Arbor, did you have a fueling station you could go to? No, we did not. We had a training table. That was about it. Mike Glass had time to pass for a moment, and then the pocket collapsed. Chuck Harris, number 41, among those in on it. Loss of four on the play. Well, you'll see, they're only going to rush four. See, when Mike Glass is in the game, they don't want to blitz. They want to make him hold the football, take away the underneath throws, and then just collapse with four. In the first half, they were blitzing. Uyghurs playing man-to-man, -man, and then he wasn't able to get away from pressure. I think Mike Glass might need to go in that fueling station right now, but uh, I don't think the Buffalo folks would let one of the opposing players in there. They might. I don't know. <laughs> they would, might bring him something out of there. He might won't let him go in. There. Would you have let a Buckeye into your place? Probably not. I don't think so. No, I, I don't think I would have done that. So, I mean, you made it right. And then oh, we talk about uh, some of the new additions to the facilities for the athletic department. How about the field house that's still on schedule to be opened up early next year? And it's not just going to be for the football team. Other sports will be able to get in there. But uh, that is in the north end zone here at UB Stadium that used to have bleachers that they tore down last year and started the construction. And, you know, this is the way it is in the back. This is what you got to do. And most of the most of the uh, football teams around the, uh, the league have a facility in one end zone. And, and it's what they're doing here in Buffalo. And I know that Coach Leipold is extremely excited about the possibilities. Well, that's going to be really nice still under construction. And it's good that multiple sports can use it. It'll be a recruiting tool, and then you can practice indoors without having to go see the Buffalo Bills. Tyler Weger is the starting quarterback back into the game. Screen pass across the 20. Leaping out of bounds is Shaq Van, the senior running back from South Bend, Indiana. Well, not a bad option if uh, one quarterback goes down to go back to Tyler Weegers, who came into this game fourth in the country and pass completion percentage 78 percent and so far in this game he is well now three for five after that last completion well you, I think every team needs two quarterbacks to make it through a 12 game schedule and you know this year so far he's not just been a dink and dunk kind of QB he can throw the football down the field Good swarming defense by Buffalo to make sure. Although now they overdid it. Flag is down. And that may negate what had been a very good defensive play. Yeah, that's just not very smart if this does go against Buffalo. They tackled the catch, played good pass defense on third and long. And then they got too aggressive. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Number 50 on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First and 10. Big mistake by the sophomore from Peekskill, New York, Malcolm Koontz. See if we can see 
The hands to the face. They got several ball defenders to the ball carrier. You see 50 Coons walking away. The officials breaking the pile up. Yeah, I got to be honest, I did not see Coons do anything there. It's not to say something didn't happen, but uh, didn't look like 50 was. Yeah, Matt could have been probably the guilty party there. He got away with one, but it still goes against the defense. Unfortunate point. Yeah, yeah. Eastern Michigan keeps the football. The drive is extended all the way out to the 44 yard line. Breck Turner with the uh, short game. The last time Eastern Michigan started a football season 3 0 was 1989. That is in the offing here today. You see the last time UB did it. This was a Division III program back in 1983. They didn't go up to the FBS level until 1999. Well, someone's going to make history before this one is over. Yep. Second and eight. Still Uyghurs in there. He's got himself a completion. And another Eastern Michigan first down. Matthew Sexton, he of the 99 career high school touchdowns. Now Buffalo's playing soft zone, and they're giving up the short passes, and Uyghurs would gladly take that. But that's because of the big pass play they gave up in man-to-man -man in, in that second quarter. Good push, second effort by Breck Turner. On the year coming in for Chris Creighton, Breck Turner had not put up big numbers, only three carries, 13 yards, one touchdown. He's been more involved in the offense so far here tonight. I think Eastern Michigan needs to get some points out of this drive here, and I'm sure Coach Creighton agrees with me because you're, not, you're only going to hold Tyree Jackson down for so long. Only one or two possessions, and then Buffalo's going to make something happen. On the jet sweep, Sexton. They strung it out. Buffalo's defense did pretty well, but not in time to stop a first down. Out of bounds at the 30. I like the call. Kept the defense honest. 93. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. Sexton is a playmaker, too. So, I mean, anytime you can get him the ball by way of air, land, however you want to do it, he needs a little more touches because he makes the defense defend the entire field when he's out there. First and 10 at the Buffalo 30, a sustained drive by Eastern Michigan, benefited by a huge Buffalo penalty. Dump it off to the back. Ian Erickson absorbs a big hit but still picks up seven. We've seen both Eastern Michigan backs, Erickson and Van, catch the ball out of the backfield with their hands, get upfield. That's just as good as any run play if you're on second and three. Buffalo's trying to take away the deep ball now with more guys back in zone coverage, but, it, but now they're vacating the underneath routes. Preseason poll for the Mac West at Eastern Michigan fourth behind Northern Illinois, Toledo, and Western Michigan. They have looked better than that so far this year. Uyghurs completes the pass to Blake Bannon. Makes a man miss. It takes two Buffalo defenders to take him down, and now more flags after the play. Let's take a look at this block on the outside. Anytime you run a screen play, watch the cut block mm. right there by Jackson. And that's probably, that, that, that could be the penalty. We've had a, a rule change with blocking. After the play, personal foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct, his first. Number 74 offense, 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Will still be first down. So it's the right tackle, Steve Nielsen, junior from Denmark. Oh, wow, that was costly, Doug. After a big game like that, you give up 15 after the play's over, the big fella. You say big fella, 6'8", 318. You aren't kidding. That's a big man, yeah. He is. One of the uh, many international players on this Eastern Michigan roster. 
It stands to reason you'd have a couple of Canadians. Ypsilanti not that far from the Canadian border. And we here in Buffalo not that far from Canada. And I know UB has at least one Canadian on the two deep from Quebec. So much Jack Cordilla. They play football everywhere. These international players are getting scholarships and they're making a difference, filling out these rosters and getting an opportunity to play. Well, on that uh, five-man front for Eastern Michigan, City Sow on the left end is from Quebec, and Steve Nielsen, who we were just looking at, is from Denmark. Banner. Pushed out of bounds and more laundry on the field back at the 22. Yeah, we're going to get a holding penalty here. And a lot of times when you run a stretch play or some type of jet sweep, it's a tough block because the play hits fast outside and the lineman really can't get a clean block on a defender. And if the defender is pursuing and he's going to create a bad angle, a more difficult angle for you to get your block. During the run, following the completed pass, illegal block in the back in the offense. The 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. Remains second down. And you'll see right there from the outside, that's Arthur Jackson, the wide receiver, 89, coming in. He was responsible for making a crack block. The defense attacked very quickly and made his block difficult. And right there, you have to pass up color and go to the next guy. But he will show, he's shown that he'll block. He, he made the great cut block on Bantam's reception that got called back on the Nielsen penalty. And then right there, he put his face in there, just was a little bit late because the Buffalo's defense played so quickly. 131 remaining here in the third quarter, second down and 16 for Eastern Michigan. Tyler Wiegers now under pressure and thrown to the ground. Chuck Harris with his second sack of the night. That man out of Southfield High School in Michigan comes free right up the middle clean on the defensive line stunt. And, and you see what those drive killing penalties by Eastern Michigan has done is put them in a bad spot. Harris comes up the middle. He started at, on the left end, wrapped all the way around to the opposite A gap. Came free. That's a good call. Good stunt. Quarterback keeps. Fumble. Glass lost it. Buffalo covers. Tyrone Hill comes up with a loose football. And it's a big takeaway for the Bulls. They came into the game number two in the country in turnover margin, forcing seven turnovers the first two weeks, a key turnover forced, and it was that man number 41, Chuck. After forcing that fumble, Chuck Harris was slow to get up and just walked off the field under his own power and appears to be okay. And as we mentioned, Marcus, in the first half, he's a young man who has gone from having one FBS scholarship offer coming out of high school to being a legitimate NFL prospect. There he is coming in to knock it loose. And then one of the emerging sophomores in the defensive secondary for Buffalo, Tyrone Hill, covering that football. And you know, if you're Chuck Harris, you don't have to look any further than your former teammate who played the other end of the defensive line the last three years with him, Damone Harris, who, like him, was late to the game of football. Damone was a local guy from here in Buffalo. Started as a walk-on, and right now he is a rookie, undrafted, but a rookie on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers practice squad. So that's where his development went over the last four or five years, and Chucky Harris looking to do the same thing and follow his buddy to the NFL next year. Uh, he made the key sack on second down to force Eastern Michigan into a longer situation. And with that, Buffalo's got the football back as we head to the fourth quarter.
Projected first round draft pick Anthony Johnson six catches 74 yards tonight all coming in the first half as coaches say he's humble and hard working. How about this hard work. Can you do that Marcus Ray. No not in <laughs> any lifetime could I ever do that. That's amazing. You talk about hand eye coordination and athleticism all in one. He's got three cousins currently in the NFL. One of them is Jadavian Clowney. So that's the kind of athletic stock he is from. He's 6'2". Because of his academics, did not play Division I football coming out of high school, had to play junior college ball. He is now a B student and on track to graduate. Trying to find his running mate, Antonio Nunn, but uh, could not quite hook up with him. And it's been quiet for Anthony Johnson here in the second half and quiet for the Buffalo offense across the board. Yeah, they haven't really had any good field position. They played on the short field, backed up due to Eastern Michigan's punt game and playing some solid defense. But as you see, Tyree Jackson's always a threat to still go deep. They've got some weapons, and Johnson has been a focal point of this secondary ever since that long catch on the sideline. That's what's opened up opportunities for Osborne and some other players. It was Johnson in motion. Jackson fires that way, but it's to the tight end Tyler Mabry, and that's good for a first down. Gain of four, although we've got a flag once again. Yeah, that's going to come from the interior line, and I believe the officials are discussing whether it's alignment downfield, holding, something of that nature. But there was a, some play action in there. Chop blocking, yeah. Interior line, have they have a new rule too. Personal though. foul, chop block, number five and 77. Half the distance to the goal remains third down. So that's the running back, Kevin Marks, in the center, James O'Hagan. Oh, a little high-low action. You'll see one guy low. Oh, they both went low at the same guy. It's a good call by the official right in the middle of your screen. Watch the running back, Marks. He goes low, chop blocks. It's a double chop block. It's a good call by the official. So it's third down at 14. Tyree Jackson, the redshirt junior quarterback out of Mona Shores High School in Michigan, fakes the pass, hands it off. Eastern Michigan was ready. Back to the original line of scrimmage, and that was it for Emmanuel Reed. It's been all defense in the second half so far, the first 16 minutes. And that's what good teams do. Yeah, you were talking about the adjustments. You were curious about what the guys were going to do in the locker room and coming out, and they certainly have made changes. Yeah, well, Eastern Michigan now is playing a little more aggressively on the outside. They blitz every now and then, and they're trying to take away the deep ball that hurt them in the first half. And on the flip side, Buffalo's doing the same thing. So they're just saying, hey, both coordinators are trying to stop the run and not give up the big play. Evan Finnegan with a low punt. Fair catch Blake Bannum. Once again, Eastern Michigan is going to get the football back in tremendous field position. Tyler Wiegers is the reigning Mac West Offensive Player of the Week based on his tremendous performance last week in West Lafayette. Yeah, he had a game-winning drive to secure the victory. But you see his accuracy. He's a high-confident guy, too, and he has great accuracy. So even when he went out this game, he came back in ready to play. And so now here in the fourth quarter, it appears that Uyghurs and Glass are back to sharing responsibilities. On the last possession, Uyghurs replaced Glass, who went out with a possible injury, but then Glass came back in and fumbled the football away. So back to Uyghurs we go. And that was kind of the plan for Chris Creighton, the head coach at Eastern Michigan coming into the year, that he liked both of his transfers well enough to think that we can utilize both of their skill sets this year. And they're, and, and they're proving that so far. Uyghur started off. Then Glass came in for the second quarter and to start the half, he goes down. He fumbled the football, and then now you get Uyghurs back in, and you're starter, and that's why they're 1A and 1B. Yeah, between the two of them, Glass and Uyghurs are 18 of 24 passing, pretty good. Make it 18 of 25, trying to go deep down the left sideline to Arthur Jackson. 
And they have collectively passed for 295 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Those were both thrown by Glass back in the second quarter. That was good coverage by Devon Russell on the sideline of the big second down. It's Jackson. Third down and seven. Still plenty of time on the play clock as the Eagles take their time. Shaq banned the running back along with Uyghurs. Here comes the rush. Uyghurs escapes. Still got his eyes downfield. And the pass is incomplete. However, a flag comes in. See the official has his hat off. That normally indicates that he stepped out of bounds and you can't be the first person back in and touch the ball whenever you see the official throw his hat on the sideline. Pre Washington was the defensive back on that play, a redshirt freshman from Charlotte. Uyghurs did a good job of staying alive and not getting sacked. Buffalo brought that heat that we saw in the first quarter that they feel like they can. So a couple of penalties against the Eagles. You see, we didn't get an official verbal call from the official, but we saw the signal. Here it comes. An offensive pass interference. The double call, they're going to have to figure it out. Pass interference, number two, offense. Penalty is declined. Illegal touching. An eligible receiver had gone out of bounds and was the first to touch the pass. That has loss of down at the previous spot. Fourth down. Eastern Michigan has had their opportunities when they've got to midfield or even across midfield to the 30 and 40 yard line range. They found a way to shoot themselves in the foot with drive killing penalties. They move the ball well until they get across the 50 and then they find a way to stop their own momentum. Now the outstanding punter for Eastern Michigan, Jake Julian averaging 50 yards tonight, including a 68 yarder on the year. He is in the top 20 in the country. Just about 45 yards per attempt. KJ Osborne stands at his own seven. Another beauty. A little bit long, though. It goes into the end zone. Nice job to get out of the way by Osborne, and Buffalo will get it at its own 25. It's a fortunate break for Buffalo to not have to start with their backs to their own end zone. They get a little bit of breathing room, but I think they've got to get Jackson going again with the short passing game. That's where he really found his rhythm and completed most of his balls, got his confidence going. He's so, only 20 years old. You know, Tyree Jackson, he throws a nice deep ball too. He, he really has a lot of different weapons at his disposal. And he trusts those guys, too. He throws them open. They make him look good. Yeah. He make them look better. Buffalo did most of its damage in the first quarter. Quick pass to Osborne. Sheds a defender. Fights his way for a gain of five. Now they say K.J. Osborne, pound for pound, might be the strongest guy on the team. And he really blossomed into a legit number two wide receiver a year ago when he caught 35 passes for nearly 500 yards and four touchdowns. Had a couple of touchdowns to start this year against Delaware State. And he has been very productive again here tonight. Over 100 yards and counting in receiving yardage. On second and five off the pump fake, Tyree Jackson just a little too long for Antonio Nunn. They have a very good mix of wide receivers. When you look at Nunn, who's their 
speedster. And you have Johnson, who can run all the routes. Osborne runs across the middle and catches bubble screen and play action. They've got a good combination of wide receivers to complement Tyree Jackson. You saw the arm strength. And the deep ball is one of the lowest percentage completed passes in all of football. But you can see Tyree's not afraid to let it go. Anthony Johnson in motion to the near side. Jackson rolling right. Fires on the run. It's a strike. K.J. Osborne. He's got to go. It's another 75-yard touchdown play in this game that's been full of them. Watch Jackson stay alive. He gets out of there. Eastern loses contain once again. Look at the teardrop pass on the run. And then Osborne does the rest. Great catching. I like how he stayed in bounds. It's tough for any defensive back to stay with these wide receivers for an extended period of time. Once the play gets beyond the pocket, then it's in Buffalo's favor. Well, up until tonight, I would say K.J. Osborne would say, if you asked him what was your best game at Buffalo, he'd say, well, last year, Western Michigan, seven catches, 138 yards, three touchdowns. Of course, that was the seven overtime game. I think this one might trump it. How about that? Seven receptions, 188, averaging 27 per. <laughs> Three touchdowns, that's a big night for any receiver. That's not even fair. I watched him during warm-up. He was extremely focused. And I believe he probably is pound for pound the strongest guy. He looks like a bodybuilder. But he was extremely focused during warm-ups. And right now, the referees are checking to see if he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, they have an angle that we're about to show you. Let's see. Right there. But is that indisputable? Because that's what it's got to be to overturn the call on the field, which is inbounds touchdown. I agree with you. He might have been out of bounds there or even there. But can you say with great certainty? That's what they're showing up on the Jumbotron. That's what's on the little video screen in front of the referee and what we're seeing as well. And Jointly, the referee along with the replay booth upstairs trying to come to a determination. It's a great job by our camera crew. Now from this angle right there, that left foot. This side angle is very tough to get a good view. Yeah, that official can't be in better position to make that call. That official's running stride for stride with KJ Osborne. Well, for a little while. <laughs> That's why he's not, he wasn't even looking at his feet. He was trying to, to get his Fitbit steps together. <laughs> After review, the ruling that the runner stayed inbound stands. Touchdown. Yeah, so because they don't have definitive visual proof otherwise, they say we stand with the original on the field call, and that's the way it's supposed to be adjudicated by the officials. Inconclusive evidence. K.J. Osborne gets the touchdown. Buffalo's offense is reignited. And like I stated earlier, it's really hard to keep an explosive offense like this down for too long. And it was just a matter of time before they figured it out. Yeah, the point is good. Well, while we talk about the numbers of K.J. Osborne, his quarterback, as you see there, number three, doing it as well. Tyree Jackson, 21 of 26, 325 yards and three touchdowns. Pro scouts love the ability of Tyree Jackson. Last week in Philly against Temple, watch him roll to his right, throw off his right foot, dropping a dime touchdown Buffalo, and we just saw the same thing here tonight. You see it right here. You cannot lose contain against Tyree. He throws it off of his right foot, going to his right, on a dime. That was on a road, too. I mean, this man can flick the ball. Flat out throw it. You see the numbers. 21 to 26. And those five miss or connects are on deep balls mm -hmm. for the most part. So we've seen him throw it high and outside, but we've seen him connect plenty of them tonight. 
Well, as I mentioned in the first half, ESPN's Mel Kuyper Jr. listed in the preseason, Tyree Jackson as his fifth best underclassman quarterback in the country. Pro scouts know who he is. As we said, he made the summer circuit with all the other big name college quarterbacks this past summer, and uh, he has come back with a re renewed sense of confidence and purpose, and the physical skill set is just off the charts. So here's another guy we haven't talked much about, Khalil, who has pro scouts saying he's going to be a pro as well. So Khalil Hodge, you're really for Buffalo. You've got three guys who NFL scouts say are potentially first, second, or third round draft picks, if not this year, then next year for Tyree. Anthony Johnson, if the draft were tomorrow, he'd go in the first round. Khalil Hodge is said to be a second or third rounder, the middle linebacker for Buffalo. And then Tyree Jackson will have a decision to make in the spring. You know, he is a fourth-year junior, so he is draft eligible. And depending on how the season plays out, he could wind up climbing those draft boards, or he has one year of eligibility remaining where he could come back and, and play a fourth season here at Buffalo. But it's not often that a Mac school at any one time has three guys thought that highly of by the NFL types. What pursuit in the backfield. Slack blew up the play initially and then waited for help to finish it off. Buffalo defense is re-energized. They're playing on the other side of the ball, living in an Eastern Michigan backfield, even with Glass back on the field. Now Eastern's in third and long, but watch the pursuit. See Tatum Slack coming from his corner back position, heavy run support. He made a big tackle on the, on the screen to play before that in the open field. Third down and 17. The quarterback is Mike Glass, the third. He's going to run and not get very far. Chibuzi on Wuka with another tackle. There goes that 41. Chuck Harris getting to the football, too, on Wuka. Harris, these guys run to the football with the intent to punish. Buffalo played prevent defense, taking all the stick routes away. Glass had to just tuck and run. And normally when you have a linebacker transition to defensive line, he usually is on the end, right? Where Chibuzi and Wuka has gone to the defensive tackle position where he's a little bit undersized, but he brings the skill set in terms of his footwork and speed of a linebacker to that position. Yeah, he's a run stopper, too, and he's very quick twitch. He's a strong guy, too, so really his height doesn't matter. It's, it's what they do with him. And if you run a stunt or a twist, he's athletic enough to maintain mm -hmm. outside leverage even when the defensive end comes underneath. There's the man with the plan, Mr. Jackson. Yeah, he's going to graduate in December. He's all-conference academic, always has a big smile on his face, one of the happiest guys, who actually we did see in tears last year when he hurt that knee again. But uh, he has done a terrific job in coming back from it and really changing his mindset to try and be much more of a pocket passer. And he is so effective in that manner. On first down, this is the freshman, Jarrett Patterson. He had a hamstring early in camp, 100% now. And they say Tyree Jackson's 100% now, but you wouldn't have thought so when they played Florida Atlantic here, and he got bent backwards. We haven't seen much of Tyree Jackson running the football, and I think it's made him a better football player. He wants to throw it. He doesn't use his legs to try to bail him out. He uses his arm. And his athletics. Big hole on the right side. Great balance to stay on his feet. Jared Patterson. And another flag after the play. You see Jared Patterson with excellent body control, lower body strength. He's, not, he's not big, but he's quick, and he's got great balance. Yeah, he's a feisty running back for a true freshman. This Buffalo team is loaded. You mentioned the potential first rounders. After, after the play, personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Number six, defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. You'll see first it to the, to the right of the screen. 
Right here, here's Pickett, plays over, then he gives a little extra right there. It's the extra shove. Patterson wouldn't yield, didn't surrender. As, as a defender right there, you just have to let him go. Yeah. And it's partly a, an emotional penalty. You're down two scores, but you left a lot of meat on the bone offensively and defensively, and now Buffalo has the momentum. And you know, there's nobody on the Buffalo sideline rooting any harder for number 26 in black than number 20, his twin brother, James Patterson, the starting outside linebacker. Now, they're not identical twins. They are fraternal twins. Jared is 5'9", while his brother is 6 feet tall and much bigger, 230 pounds. Here comes the smaller of the two twins trying to make things happen. And this is just another illustration of the depth that Coach Leipold and his staff has continued to develop, that now that's your number four running back and you feel good about giving him the football in a game like this. Yeah, and he's very productive. He only had one carry last week, but at the end of that run, you can hear the officials saying, we're done, we're done. And that was due to the last personal yeah. foul penalty that Eastern Michigan had on the sideline. And we've had a number of those tonight. This is the start of conference play. After a couple of big non-conference wins both ways, Eastern and Buffalo, you knew something would have to give tonight. Buffalo's been playing from in front all evening. Jared Patterson bounces it outside. Bounces off Ike Calderon, and he's got himself a first down. He's the hot hand right now in that backfield. Young freshman showing you why he's, he's going to be a good one. But the offensive line picked up a good block right there by Tomas Jack Cardilla. The right guard got an excellent kick out block to really spring Patterson off that right side. Now, Jared Patterson found the end zone week one against Delaware State in a game that most everybody got involved. Locked down to seven minutes and 40 seconds. The tight end, Mabry. Now, the lead blocker after being in motion, and again, Jared Patterson. Finding plenty of green to pick up seven or eight yards. This time they go around the right end. Buffalo's trying to milk the clock. And try to get to a three-score lead. And put Eastern Michigan's back to the wall even further. But you can see they're not afraid to feed to feed the beast. And Jared Patterson, a few carries in a row. And he's looking better and better on each one. Picks up eight there. There's Jackson, the two-time reigning Mac East Offensive Player of the Week. Three touchdowns at Temple, including the game-winning pass late to Anthony Johnson. Now just working more clock is Buffalo. But when you're in second and two, it's a little tough to stop an offense that's found its rhythm. The offensive line got their second win because Buffalo wasn't running the football like this, not even in the third quarter. So I think Buffalo's winning the battle of attrition. See Coach Leipold, he likes what he sees. And they're running the play clock down. If you look at the bottom right of your screen, they're 14 seconds on the clock, and, they, and, they have, and they're just now lining up. They are well within field goal range for Adam Mitchison if they so choose to go there, if they're stopped. But they are not. How about the jitterbug moves of Jared Patterson? <laughs> Oh, we got two different spots out there. We got one official short. You're right. I thought he made it easily. Big fella C.J. Hunt, 97, with a good tackle, playing real stout in the middle. It's a big stop. Wow. Anything's possible because, you know, with a two-score lead, you, you give up another first down there, now you're looking at another two minutes off the clock. So they've got to get close to the 19. Doesn't look like, based on the officials, that they got there. It's the second time we've seen Buffalo go for it on fourth down in the red zone, come up short. Depend on the spot. And indeed, they turn it over on down. So Eastern Michigan still has the door open. They get the football back down 14. Back at UB Stadium in Amherst, New York. There are two campuses for the University of Buffalo, one 
downtown. This is the more recent addition. Lots of land out here in Amherst where they've got this football stadium. Had a good crowd to start the game. And as good a student section as I have seen in recent years for UB. You see Mike Glass back in to play quarterback at Eastern Michigan. And thanks to their defensive stop, Marcus, EMU has a chance. Well, you see all those guys standing in the back playing cover four. They're playing deep so that they can take away the deep ball. Something that Mike Glass hurt them with in the first half. Incomplete. Matthew Sexton could not haul it in. But we have seen quick strike both ways. Twice, Glass has thrown long touchdowns, 176 yards, the other covering 75 yards. And so he certainly got it in him for a quick strike here. Well, they're going to make Mike Glass beat them underneath the deep and dunk throws. Glass is going to run. Big move, another move. Bulls defenders uh, whiffed one after another. Finally, James Patterson, the other Patterson twin, making the final play. That's a good decision by Glass to tuck and run, and you see his ability in the open mm. field. A little shake and bake. There he goes again, stays inbound, so the clock keeps running after a short game. Shaq Van getting the carry off tackle and tried to get out of bounds, but the Bulls took him to the turf. Now Eastern Michigan really is in a hurry up, a two minute situation. Glass has it knocked down. Once again, it's number 41, Chuck Harris. Chuck Harris is mean. He's a mean guy. When he puts on that uniform, I mean, he just doesn't like the other team. You see right here, they ran a twist stunt. Glass recognizes, gets up the field. I thought he probably could have kept running and just got about three yards and got out of bounds. And he's another guy who might wind up hearing his name called in next year's NFL draft. Harris, 6'4", 255, senior out of Southfield High School in Detroit, making plays again here tonight. There's the third down conversion rate, 6 to 13 for Eastern. Not that time. It's good coverage on the back end. They sent a little zone blitz, trying to get someone in the face of Mike Glass. Timing of the route was off. Buffalo did a good job of passing off the routes on the back end to the next person. There goes that man. Real close to 300 career tackles. Khalil, Khalil Hodge right in the middle of the field. On fourth and nine. Glass rolls, throws, incomplete. And Buffalo will get the football back. Let's give you a sense of what Chuck Harris has done defensively tonight for the Bulls. See him right here coming on the up and under move. He's a physical guy, too. I, his first step is amazing. He's a great athlete. Watch him run to the football and club, and cause a fumble. Then you'll see him here getting more pressure with the QB hurry. Then he has something to say afterwards, too. Look at him. He's just, it's all over the place. I think he's one of the inspirational leaders of this football team. You see the numbers. Eight tackles, two and a half behind the line. Those are the, the sacks, the forced fumble. This man can play the game. He's tough to block. Keeping it on the ground on first down. Jared Patterson, or rather uh, Emmanuel Reed, excuse me. Starter back into the game for this series. Now, Western Michigan two years ago was the gold standard for Mid-American Conference football. They had pros on the field. They had power five wins. They were nationally ranked. Now, I'm not saying Buffalo is going to get to that point, but I almost feel like this team, with its talent, with its star power, has the potential for a really big year this year. I'm going to tell you what, this Buffalo team can be very special. And even talking to Coach Creighton this week, he told us they don't have any deficiencies. 
they, Eastern Michigan's coaches believe when they put the tape on and looked at Buffalo, that Buffalo didn't have any weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have any weaknesses, and I think that it showed today, they got their quarterback, receivers, backs, offensive line is good. This D line is athletic. Secondary is fast. Linebackers all over the place. This team can be as good as they want to be. And and when you look at who's on their schedule possibly coming up. They already got the big win last week. Yep. They've been in a close one. They found a way to take Eastern's best punch. This team's got all the right ingredients. So, you know, if they go to Rutgers next week, and even though Rutgers is not a good team, they are still a Power 5 team. They're a Big Ten Conference team. They go and win that, then come home and beat a good Army team before they get back into league play, you might hear some rumblings nationally where people are starting to pay attention to Buffalo. Yeah. Still long ways off, but it seems like the ingredients might be there. I couldn't agree more. In Kansas, they put one on Rutgers earlier today, and... Uh, Rutgers better figure it out because they're going to have their hands full with this Bulls team. Yeah, no question about it. And for Lance Leipold, this is a program that, uh, you know, as recently as two years ago, won only two games. Last year took a big step forward. Six wins, six losses. They were bowl eligible. Won their last three games and were really disappointed that they didn't get a bowl. But the reality is they took that momentum from closing out the MAC with three straight wins, and now they're on the verge of winning a third straight to start the year. That's a six-game winning streak. The, the, the momentum is building. Exactly right. And even though they didn't go to a bowl game, they still they was able to recruit, get their coaches out there, rest up some guys. This team is dangerous. Lance Leipold knows how to win and win big. He won six Division Three national championships during his days at Wisconsin Whitewater. During an eight-year span, he lost a total of six games while winning 109. That's amazing on any level. <laughs> Even from college pro, peewee, pop Warner, that's excellent. Yeah. High school. Yeah, he knows how to win. He is building a winner here in Buffalo. Looks like Reed may have coughed it up. Eastern Michigan's got the football. That's how you tackle the football right there, Doug. You take your arm. And you punch it. It's called a club. We'll see if we can find out who caused this fumble. Just off tackle zone play. Look at Max Crosby. That's the guy. Yep. That is their man. Turnover machine. Very disruptive. I think Hunter Andrews might have been the one who covered it. Yeah, we haven't talked much about Max Crosby, who, as you say, is a real impact performer. First team all conference in the preseason. Last year, 11 sacks to tie the Eastern Michigan record. And uh, he is on pace to potentially chase down Avery Brown's all-time program record for career sacks. Glass at quarterback. Buffalo's going to be happy to give up that sort of play to Blake Bannum and let the clock keep running. This game's not over, but Buffalo, when they go back and watch the tape, they didn't put Eastern away. Eastern still has a chance to make something happen. And Buffalo came out flying tonight, led 14-0 after one quarter, but uh, you're right, they let Eastern Michigan stay in the game. And it's not likely, but stranger things have happened. 2.45 remaining. Last threw a fastball right through the hands of the intended receiver who uh, could not handle it. I think right there you can run the ball, get the first down, spike it, yep. and line back up. You know, instead of putting yourself in a situation that's all or nothing on fourth down, you can run it here, but it's no guarantees. But the defense was expecting it. Well, they are going to run it with Ian Erickson. Looks like he got there. That'll move the chains. Clock stops for that at 231. You can trust Ian Erickson when it counts the most. Last week he had a 10-yard burst. To close out Purdue, fought for some extra yards. He's had a good career at Eastern Michigan, too. Senior from Clarkston, Michigan. Down the left sideline, trying to find Sexton. Well, Eastern Michigan typically would uh, take the bus to get 
here to Buffalo for a game, but because they are at San Diego State for a non-league game next week, they uh, chartered, flew, and so they'll take a 50-minute flight back to campus, and that helps to, in a relatively short week, because you've got to travel so far out to the West Coast, help them get turned around. Let's see what my glass will come up with here. And he did it with his legs. Another 10-yard run. Looks like he got a first down. 2-11 on the clock. You see a four-man rush here. Those guys got up the field a little bit too far. Glass didn't want to force it. He was able to make a nice game, but the clock still keeps running. On the crossing route, Isaac Holder. And Eastern Michigan is shown on the road against a very good opponent. A lot of good things here. And you've got to figure that uh, they are going to be involved in the Mac West race over the course of the next couple of months. Yeah, they're going to have a say in how that whole thing shakes down. And, you, you, and stranger things have happened. I mean, this could easily be a rematch in Detroit for the conference championship. You just never know. With both teams, they continue to play well and win. They came into this game 2-0. and And Eastern Michigan really showed a lot of resilience to fight back down 14-0 with all the momentum. A lot of football to be played between now and November 30th, the aforementioned MAC championship game. Illegal substitution. The 12th man did not get off before the snap. That penalty is declined. Eastern Michigan has elected to have the clock start on the snap. Well, after the game at San Diego State next weekend, Eastern Michigan returns home and returns back to MAC play, hosting Northern Illinois. That's a 6 o'clock kick and can be seen on ESPN+. Glass goes down. Taylor Riggins. Sophomore from Webster, New York. That's the Rochester area. Out of Aquinas High School. Played for the Little Irish at Aquinas Institute. Went to UMass, transferred to Buffalo. He is Chuck Harris' backup. You see Harris right there getting watered up. Hydrate, Ce hydrate. <laughs> at the fuel station. <laughs> See Mike Glass, but he came in and gave a valiant effort. He and, sure did. And really showed his coaches, I believe, and himself that he's very capable. And I just think that the game plan for Glass was better. It gave him a better chance to succeed than it did with Uyghurs to start off. But then Uyghurs came in after Glass went down for a play or two or series. And then he got some momentum going, and he was – completing balls at a high percentage too. Eastern Michigan has legitimately two quarterbacks. Yeah. Glass is 14 to 24 passing, 249 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, one fumble. Uyghurs 8 of 11, 64 yards. Banna, room to run. Pick up of 16. I haven't called his name much this evening. But you see what he can do when he gets the ball. We got a man down. And it's Cam Lewis. He's one of the toughest, most physical players on this defensive football team. You know, I mentioned in the first half, Marcus, how last since last fall, this young man has had three surgeries, one on his thumb, two on a broken arm that didn't get fully healed until a few weeks ago. He came back after breaking his thumb early last year and played games with a club on his hand, still effectively played, able to make tackles, able to be involved in pretty much every facet of his job. But he is slow to get up here. Well, he, he made two big ones last week. We'll take a look at it against Temple. This is a big interception because Temple goes deep trying to get some points, goes up high points the ball. Now look what he does. Makes something happen, recreates the field, flips the field. Tried to take it to the house, stayed on his feet, gets up, points to his jersey. Yeah, he has notice. that 41 on. 
Worst you know, teammate. Week one, Brandon Williams wore 41. Week two, you just saw Cameron Lewis was wearing 41. Tonight, it's been Chuck Harris. And again, that's in honor, honor and memory of the late Solomon Jackson, former linebacker defensive end who died during an offseason workout back in February of 2016. And we showed you the locker that remains intact that they added special lighting to this past offseason. And uh, all of these guys think of Solomon every single day when they pass by that locker. 41. Chuck Harris has played a tremendous game. We haven't really, again, talked much about Khalil Hodge. But you know what? He's going to probably have 12 tackles. You know, <laughs> it's just the way it is with him. Well, no one had more tackles than Khalil Hodge in the last two seasons. You look at his 277 tackles. Number four in black. He's got 13. <laughs> Just another ho-hum game for number four in black. A real quiet 13, too. This very efficient. Another day at the office. Brought his lunch pail. He knows how to find the football. He reads his keys well. He plays fast. And he's very aggressive. Yeah, he's not going to win the 40 at the uh, NFL Combine next year, but if you look at the tape and you followed him the last couple, three years, he, he, you see he's just a guy who makes plays like, oh, by the way, the one he just made. Oh, now he plays whistle to whistle, quarter to quarter, beginning to end, win or lose. Number four is going to show up. Glass. Stop just shy of the goal line. Gaddafi Wright was the last line of defense for UB. Timeout Buffalo. Yeah, they have to get their personnel on the field. They tried to substitute. Let's take a look at Glass here. Looks down the field, nothing's home. Let linebackers vacate the middle of the field. He, he tried to get into the end zone right on that one. Gutsy performance by number nine as a, in, in a backup role. Yeah. Now his rushing yards are starting to pile up a little bit. And he's put together a, a well of a game. Yeah, I got 13 carries, 68 yards, including that 17-yard run. That leads the team as well, which is a good thing and a bad thing. You really don't want your quarterback being your leading rusher. And again, you got to get some more production out of some of these other guys to balance out that offense. And then, you, you know, Eastern Michigan has to take what Buffalo has given them, which has been the quarterback run especially after they got burned on two big ones. By Arthur Jackson and Bantam with the two big passes, Buffalo said, uh-uh, quarterback runs, no deep ball. Just saw number 43, Tyler Lyle, sophomore from Kalamazoo, full back into the game. Try to lead block or push from behind as Glass goes with the quarterback sneak. And it is a touchdown. Glass's first touchdown run of the night. No, well, you kick the PAT, you go for an onside kick, and you never know. And now we're in situational football. A lot of times, teams spend countless hours on special team situations, onside kick, two-minute drill, recovering and onside, defending and onside. But give that man a standing ovation for his performance. And he, even that last drive, I mean, Eastern Michigan hadn't put up any points in a, in a good stretch. And they kept fighting. And if you get this extra point and the onside kick, Review. So they're reviewing that touchdown. Going to see if a replay shows in all that mass of humanity, if you can tell if his knee was down. Oh, he crossed that plane. Had a good push from behind. I love the center, Dakota Tallman, rolling onto his back on the pile with his arms extended up, calling for the touchdown. They got a good push up front on that play, too. Let's see, we, we hit the four screen. 
quad split. Some fancy stuff we got coming from the truck. So as you'll see, number nine is clearly over the line. I mean, his knee is in the end zone. You see all those white shirts laying in the end zone, and you know they got a good push. As you see, watch Mike Glass, the third, keep his legs driving right there. He crossed the plane by two yards. After review, the ruling of a touchdown stands. Please correct the game clock to 42 seconds. So now if you're Lance Leipold, you and uh, your special teams coaches have to get your hands team ready to get out there and secure the football one more time. Tell you what, you can't fall asleep. And that ball will bounce anywhere. You better have your best 11 with the best hands on the, on the field. Point after is good to make it a seven-point game. So Chad Ryland, who had the big game-winning field goal at the end of last week's game, keeps the Eagles in position for a possible crazy finish. Were you a hands team guy back in Michigan? I sure was. Good for you. I was right next to Charles Woodson sometimes, but then they started putting him deep. But I was on the hands team. Did you ever come up with a, a big recovery on one of these? No, I let it bounce over my head a couple times. <laughs> Mostly they had wide receivers over there like Amani Tumor and Ty Streets and those kind of guys. Those are some good guys. Yeah. <laughs> you guys had a lot of NFL talent, including yourself. Playing for Michigan at that time. <laughs> All right, so we're seeing some of the hands team guys. Yeah, let's see who some of these guys are. You saw Mabry out there, tight end. You got uh, Osborne, Rodney Scott. You're going to see wide receivers and mostly offensive guys are on the field. But you need a couple of bigger bodies, too, just to kind of blow up the wedge that's coming at you. Most important play of the game right here. Takes a big bounce. Uh -oh. Still alive. We, oh. Buffalo has it. Rodney Scott the third, the redshirt freshman from Miami, able to secure it. And that should do it, although we've got another flag on the field. Trying to determine if Buffalo has something going on. Coach Leipold is fired up. Eastern Michigan. I, I mean, I tell you what, that was an excellent onside kick the way the ball bounced. We're getting ready to get the word. Offside, number 40 on the kicking team. The five-yard penalty will be assessed from the end of the run. The clock should have started because it was touched in the field of play. Please set the game clock to 40 seconds. Thank you. So the penalty against Eddie Doherty should be of no consequence. Buffalo keeps the football and should be able to run out the final 40 seconds on the clock. In victory position, Tyree Jackson. Buffalo securing a victory. Puts them at six straight going back to last season. Finished up with three wins, starting the season with three wins. And Coach Creighton and his crew gave a great effort to only lose by seven points when it looked like things were about to get out of control in that first quarter. Well, they fought back beautifully. But down 14 nothing at the end of one quarter, just a little too much to overcome. Michigan says, why not use this last time out? <laughs> Go, 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 go. 
Now the numbers for Buffalo on the offensive side pretty good. Tyree Jackson 21 of 26 passing 325 yards three touchdowns his big play receiver was KJ Osborne seven catches for 188 yards a career high tying three touchdowns including a 75 yard beauty. Anthony Johnson six catches 74 yards all coming in that first half. And you know what the uh, running back by committee for Buffalo was effective as a team they averaged 4.3 yards per attempt. Emmanuel Reed leads them all with 68 marks 60 yards and then the freshman Patterson came in and ran for 35 yards in the fourth quarter. You see they were averaging 390 coming into the game as a team. At 492 tonight almost 500 yards of total offense. They were sounded special teams. And they made some big plays on defense as well. There's number eight. Makes sense that Osborne would be out there to be part of the victory celebration. That'll do it. Buffalo starts the season 3-0 for the first time since 1983. It has now won six in a row including the last three of a year ago and both teams will meet at midfield after the first game of the max season for both is in the books 35 28 is the final buffalo over eastern michigan great football game both of these teams came in here two and zero. Oh. Eastern Michigan showed a lot of fight and big playability, something they hadn't been able to do on, on offense. Buffalo looked too much firepower. Tyree Jackson, one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football. This Buffalo team, I think, is for real. So for Marcus Ray, I'm Doug Sherman saying so long from Buffalo, where once again our final score, the Bulls 35, the Eagles 28. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app or to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks log on to watch ESPN.com or download the watch ESPN app. So long from UB Stadium where Buffalo stays undefeated. This has been a presentation of ESPN.